Shut up and sit down. Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Build Paint Play. I'm Dave. And I'm Jake. And today we are <clears throat> today we are joined by our friend Patrick from Bombshell Miniatures. And uh hey. as you can tell there, sorry, just <laughs> me. Yes, you can tell Jake will be uh gruff and grumbly for the entire yeah, a little under the weather. Yeah. Not doing too well. But uh sorry, Patrick, I was gonna <laughs> I interrupted you there. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate you inviting me. It's uh, it's great to be here. I like uh, I like having the opportunity to sit and chat with you guys. So hopefully we'll have some fun. Uh, definitely, I think uh, I think we will. <laughs> uh, say hi to everybody in the chat. Um, first up, I'm I'm not sure if you've seen that first comment from Scott. I I did. Yep. Even folks, Dave did hear that episode of Crown of Command podcast that Jake was on. It was pretty good. He had lots to say. Great episode. Maybe you can guest on it as well. <laughs> yeah. I was just trying to answer all the questions he kept asking me. That's that's it's what we have. It's it's the way we work. Um, everybody should know that by now. Um, I'm the uh, I'm the quiet guy. <coughs> the uh, with the stories and uh, we go from there it all works out well um oh greg's joining us hey greg uh john's here jeff's here josh is here uh cyberwolf good evening from austin texas who is cyberwolf what's your first name cyberwolf so we can uh, we can know and we can learn it i'm sure we know um the yeah, answer is uh we decided we were going to start calling you both jave <laughs> It works. It's, it's okay. I, I do enjoy the uh, the economy of um, <laughs> economy of letters there. Why not Dake though? Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Dake. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Scott says, "Love your work, Patrick." I uh, got some of it on the Womp site back in the day. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. That is that's quite a ways. Kind of ways yeah. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Matt Bowles is here. Uh, Lee is here. Evening. Oh my goodness. Okay. Cyberwolf is Mike Becker. Oh, hey, Mike. Yeah. Glad you could make it. That's, that's yeah. cool. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, glad you can join us. Very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> and Dan just says Dave sounds better than Dake. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I think for both Jake and I, we'll be uh, confused by either one for a long time. It, it may sound better if you guys had, you know, more syllables. To each one of your names, you know, where you could, you know, then it's just yeah, one that's syllable. true. We yeah. both have one syllable names. It's it's yeah. tough to uh it's tough to already shorten that. Right. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh I'm not sure if I told you this, Jake, but the uh so in Australia, the Australians are classically uh stereotyped as uh like shortening everything. We're always told, okay, you we're always shortening words. What we're actually doing is we're just we're turning each word into a two syllable word. So Dave would actually become Davo. 
Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that just it wouldn't be the single. Because I, I shorten I shorten everything as 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 short as possible. I do it to everybody. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Excellent. Uh, and awesome. Matt is going to enjoy our comedy comedic stylings. Very cool. Um. Anyway, so uh, Patrick is here. For those of you who don't know, uh, Patrick is uh, an incredible sculptor uh, and uh, owner of Bombshell Minis, Bombshell Miniatures. Um, Patrick, you've been sculpting for a long time now, I'm going to say. How long have you been sculpting? Yeah, I, I, since, well, 20 years. 2004 is when I started sculpting miniature stuff. Okay. Um, I, was, I, I was doing polymer clay and you know some of that other stuff just as you know side art things you know uh before that right. but um uh yeah I, I and it, and it's all started you know they say the gateway drug for you know sculpted miniatures is doing model conversions and stuff and so that's what i was doing you know for our warhammer armies and that kind of thing and um so i had a little collection of stuff that i had done and there was a local show here where i got to meet um Ed and Dave, you know, from Reaper Miniatures, okay. uh, whenever they had just first started up, it's uh, when they were at their first location. And so um, it, it, it was seeded and then I kind of went away and came back to it later. So, but yeah, it's been a while. Been a while. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, I, I will say it's, it's not too, not too long. Not too long. 20 years mm -hmm. is not too long. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, um, and I, and, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I started like semi pro, I guess. Um, uh, I, I guess the first sculpts that I sold were to Impact Miniatures and then later to Reaper. Uh, okay. And that was, I want to say it was around, yeah, 2004, 2005, somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. So. That's awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, just quickly, uh, Chris Kamig has joined us, as has Mel. Hi, Mel. Hi, Chris. What's up, Mel? What's up, Chris? Uh, <coughs> Yep. Um, while Jake's voice is down, maybe this is a great time to talk about how lame Thundercats really was. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, nobody's going to believe that. And soccer players are just as tough as hockey players. Okay. Now he's, I mean, he's, he's, li he's living beyond the pale now at this point. <laughs> exactly. He's Canadian. He should know better. Yep. Nobody's going to believe you. Nobody's going to believe you, Scott. Fantastic. Um, okay. Just, uh, this is the time of the show when we jump into talking about uh, a few different things before we get into the meat of the episode. Uh, yeah, yep, exactly. You're correct, Jake. Uh, I am going to click on this, and then I'm going to click on this. Oh, did, it lock, gonna... did it lock up? No, no, we're all good. <laughs> um, okay, oh, did it lock up for you, Patrick? So yeah. Patrick, um, uh, well, it, it's kind of mm -hmm. glitched a little bit. Yeah. Patrick lives down in rural Texas. Is that fair to say? Rural Texas? Yeah. 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 Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's sort of, it's not as rural as it could be. Uh, but yeah, it's, 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 we're, <laughs> we're living in an area that's not even an incorporated city. So yeah. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Cool. So, yeah, very first thing we need to do uh, is to uh, thank our season sponsor, the Army Painter. Um, I grabbed this from the Army Painter's Instagram page. Uh, and actually, when I was I was chatting with, not chatting with, I was watching. <laughs> it feels like I was chatting with, but I was watching um, Brent on uh, from Goober Town Hobbies. Uh, he was talking about the uh, different things that he'd sort of done with uh, in his work with. The army painter or his uh interactions with the army painter not so much work but one of the things he suggested was that in the starter paint set as well as having paints and a brush you needed a single piece mini <laughs> so that's when somebody buys that that box very if that's their very first hobby purchase they've got a miniature in there that they can uh, start painting straight away and uh lo and behold this picture popped up and i thought i'd grab it and it is a pretty cool mini. I love that pose. Very sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I saw that that video that he had posted the other day. And that's a great starter set. Um, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> loads of uh, great colors in there. And 
uh, it all seemed to mix pretty well to give uh, mm -hmm. but uh, looking good. Their, their, new met their new metallics are so good. Yeah. This set's um, available for pre-order now, Jake. Is that right? Yeah, this one and the complete set, I think. Right. Uh, well, actually, I mean, at this point, they're all up for pre-order. But they're all up for pre-order. Um, I believe it's the mega set and the complete set come out first. Right. And then the fanatic starter, the um, it's the other. It's not the most wanted. It's the it's like the second half of the most wanted. I forget what it's called. Right, yeah. Essentials. I think it's essentials. Okay. So, like, that's also available, and then all the single paints are up. From what I remember, and Matt Bowles is on here, so he'll probably know as well, but yeah. um, I believe the release date for all this stuff is, for the first two sets, is in March, and then the rest of the range is going to come out over the course of April. Um, the sets will come out first, and then the line will come out. Cool. <laughs> so um, either head to the Army Painter website, which is down below, or uh, head into your local store and talk to them about uh, getting... Uh, pre-order set up for it and if you don't have a friendly local store which you should but if you don't you can order off alpha omega.com alpha mega hobby.com yep. oh speaking of which found out the other day yep there's some chinese company that has cloned our logo and they've made up a fake website uh and i know because some guy called me and was like hey i placed an order with you guys a couple of days ago i haven't gotten it and i was like oh look it up I'm like what's the name on the order and he tells me and i'm like I don't have it in here. And he's like, oh, I ordered like these three conquest models. And I was like, you definitely didn't order them for me. And he's like, I'm looking at your website right now. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, I see your logo and everything. And I was like, what does your search bar say? Are you on alpha mega hobby.com? And he's like, no, I'm on something, something, you know, hobbies at ca.us, like whatever. And I was like, that's not us. Like, I don't know where, where you are. I'm like here, like, this is our website. So he's like, oh yeah, this looks totally different. Right. So, <laughs> guys they've done it oh, before man. when yeah. you scroll to the bottom and it has like all the like on your page it has you know you know texas and your address and everything so their address all i did was i just right clicked and copied it and put it in google and it's literally like a rural street in the middle of nowhere in ohio there's no house there and right. then the phone number has like four too many numbers in it so it's not a real number it just looks like one um so I contacted our IP attorney because we own the Alpha Mega logo. Like we, I own that internationally. So we we called him, and then he's like, "I'll reach out to the hosting site." And then I emailed the hosting site. And then the good news was, unfortunately, these guys are morons. They keep putting Games Workshop stuff up at below what's minimum advertised price. Right. So Games Workshop, I was like, I'm just gonna let the 800 pound gorilla take care of it. They did it last time. They went after him last time and got their site taken. <laughs> Because on their main page, they have like a bunch of Titanica stuff that's yeah. all, you know, it's like a Warlord Titan for 60 bucks. And I'm like, yeah, yeah you can't. maybe not. <laughs> but yeah. Cool. Excellent. <coughs> uh, so next up is uh, Hobby and Hobby we've been up to. Uh, first up, we've got Patrick. Patrick, we've got. That's awesome. Is that a Talarn medic? No, it's uh, Sister Verity. She's a. Um, character from one of the novels uh and it looks like <laughs> thanks to rural texas patrick's uh feet is frozen oh oh no, no. <laughs> um okay we will uh move along and we'll come back to patrick once he's back uh back with us jake what do you mean up to yeah the horde uh the horde continues to advance um so <clears throat> the squad in the back, the red squad, they're basically done. Um, I actually pulled them out and kind of touched them up because I didn't realize that um, I didn't finish. Um, I, I used I used uh, on the on the last couple of guys I've done. I used the black contrast paint, um, black Templar, and I like painted in all of their like seams. And on those guys, I didn't. And I was like, oh, that's going to drive me nuts. So I like went and got them and like pulled them out and did all did all that stuff and cleaned them up and then uh, went back and touched them up. So that squad is done. And then the squad that's closer to, to uh, the bottom of the screen, uh, I have to do their chest eagles. I have to do their – I already painted their eyes white. I have to do like the – I use the Tesseract glow on their right. eyes. So that's I have the, to do – Super vibrant. Yeah, yeah. So I have to do that next and I'll, you know, I'll tilt them all backwards and so it'll pool. I have to do that, and then I have to do their um their white stripes, and then I just got to base them. 
and then I'll have both of my um, line, my battle line units will be done. Okay. Uh, and then in the tray, and then the, the three guys to the right on the back of the paper towel, that's my two lieutenants and my captain. The lieutenants, I'm just going to do them at the same time as the squad because they basically have the same paint scheme. Um, the captain, like we were talking about before we jumped on, he's a little more fiddly. Um, there's so much flair on that model. He has so many different like textures and things. And I'm like, oh, God, like I have to paint so many things on him. Um, but then they'll all be done. And then in the tray, I have 10 Death Company and my two Apothecary or my two Sanguinary Priests. And then I'll be done. The Sanguinary Priest should be easy. I'm basically just going to paint their tabards and stuff. And then I got to hit them with like, Apothecary White and then I'll go back and I'll edge them. And then I just got to do like, they're all like detail. It's all like, you know, they're red helix pattern things and like they have their their sanguinary badge and they have like lots of blood drops on them so there's a lot of little like knickknacks on them but like their paint scheme overall should be pretty easy okay that's cool you haven't gotten your vortex mixer yet no, no still don't have one okay <laughs> they're very handy and that's what i keep hearing my, my arms still work good so i haven't had to like <laughs> i haven't had to get one yet but i probably will um I was talking to my wife about it. She's like, oh, maybe I'll get you one. I was like, cool. So my birthday's coming. Who knows? Um, cool. No. no it's but... <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, Dave, Dave I'm, I'm nervous, man. I'm, I'm starting to get nervous. I'm like, man, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time. You, so you're going like... gonna to laugh at me when... <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping to get these guys knocked out before Sunday. Because on oh. Sunday, I leave and I go to Gamma. And I'm in Gamma for like the whole week. And then I get back and I work Friday and Saturday... And then I have Sunday off, so I'm hoping I can, um, I'm hoping I can prime the tanks. Like the tanks are at work, and because I was home sick today and yesterday, like I didn't get to prime them. So I'll, I'm, I'm hoping it's gonna be nice next week. Uh, and then I basically have a week before we go to Adepticon, so I get home and I have a week. Right. Or no, I guess we have ten days. I guess we have ten days. So yeah, don't. I'm, hope, I'm hoping short. I get the prime. <laughs> don't sell it short. Oh, good. So how many how many more thousands points of space rings did you paint? Well, we'll, we'll get we'll get that in a second. While we've got Patrick here and uh, and the internet's working, we'll um, we'll go back to uh, Sister Verity. Uh, tell us about this, Patrick. Uh, well, this was a conversion that I wanted to do um, that I came up with. Um, it's uh, it's a character from the Hammer and Anvil novel, and as I was reading through that, there was a, a distinct description of her kit that she had for being deployed to sanctuary 101 which is kind of this desert planet where the uh convent or whatever you call it is and uh so i thought well i've, I've got some bits i've got the um what is it the no novitiates box set that's got the little medic and stuff in it and and so i thought well uh i had an extra uh minka lesk figure the little limited imperial guard so yep. i thought well that's going to make a, a pretty good combo there so it's it's bits from both of those kinds of models. And uh, so I finally got that primered up and uh, did the, the Zenithal spray or whatever the highlight thing on it. And so I'll start painting that probably this weekend. What is it? Is it so, Minka's head and torso? Mm -hmm, that's right. And then I, then all the rest of it's uh, uh, novitiate, um, what uh, hospital or whatever that's called. She's yeah. got some, she's got some big hands. She does it, well, particularly on the um, on the on the right hand. It's 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 comically large, actually. Yeah, but that's that's the actual that's the actual sculpt from the kit. So you know, did you consider uh, resculpting it? No, <laughs> <laughs> because I mean I'm so out of out of touch with the green stuff, and it was enough to patch up you know the midsection and do the. The little habit or wimple or whatever that's called you know and and the goggles and things i was just like oh i'm so glad i don't have to mess with that stuff a lot anymore so uh right. yeah no that was the extent of it so <laughs> excellent no yeah she looks cool i think uh, thanks it's gonna be thanks. great to to see her uh all painted up yeah um, i'm looking forward to seeing how it turns out so what what color are you gonna go for for the uh for the head scarf there uh, that it'll be white. Uh, it, she's, um, I, I think I'm going to stick with whatever the, the standard novitiate colors are for that oh, because it's, yeah. it's kind of from the book. And I, I think the main characters are the, um, order of the martyred lady anyway. So it's kind of that stock black and red, you know, for the, like the regular sisters and all that. So, yeah. 
mm-hmm. so that it, that would match well across with the uh, the white hair and mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah excellent uh, that that Zorn palette right the the Zorn the Zorn palette yeah right yeah. <laughs> um, Scott says, "Boy, converting minis must be so much fun when you can actually sculpt." <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, it's it's more like a jigsaw puzzle. It's like, well, you know, uh, I've, I've, here's a collection of bits, and you know, make something out of it. So, I I love converting. Like, I'm I'm not a good sculptor in any way, shape, or form, but I've gotten really good at like flipping my my uh, snips around so it's flat on one side or mm-hmm. you know, or the 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 well on the other side. Yeah. So I always snip with the flat side towards what I want to keep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then i'll like you know file them down so they fit nice they fit really nice um mm-hmm. and i've had to use like a little bit of green stuff to like gap fill and i've been able, i can do like fur like green stuff fur is like the extent uh or yeah. like belts that's like the extent of my sculpting yeah uh, yeah but i i I've, I've always loved converting converting is always my favorite it's one of the reasons i i was kind of bummed out about a lot of the new sets like the the old jess goodwin or the current jess goodwin tactical squad mm-hmm. is like one of the best kits ever so used to, i used to buy that and then like the Space Marine Commander and then the Space Marine Command Squad box and like even like veterans, like whether it was Vanguard veterans or Stern Guard, and you just mix all those parts together. And I was like, this is great. You can make whatever you want. Mm-hmm. But now because so much of the stuff is like monopose or like limited pose, like they don't want you to really do that. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. So I'll just, you know, I'll file stuff and cut stuff and I'll, I'll, I'll end up with like, you know, 25 Space Marines that I bought and I can build like 11 of them because I cut them all. Um, but it must be it must be really nice just being like i'm just going to sculpt this thing that i want from scratch it's yeah. it is handy i mean it's, <laughs> i, I got to admit there's you know uh cuz you get to a certain point where it's like hey i can't find this you know and this i really want to i really you know you have an idea for a particular model or a particular character and now you want to do it and that's and that's one of the reasons why they kind of call it the the gateway type of thing because you know you start off in in little increments and um and w- when i was when i was first learning how to sculpt in putty and uh i kind of sat with Werner clock a little bit when he was at ReaperCon one time and uh, he went through and showed well here's how i make all of the belts and pouches and straps and buckles and all that stuff separately and then i kind of assemble them onto the miniature and it, it opened up a whole new way of looking at doing that kind of model work and I, and so it's it's uh, really super easy now to just take like a little piece of uh uh you know, plastic sheeting and, you know, flatten out the putty and then cut strips of, uh, you know, for, for belts and, and straps and that kind of thing. So it's, it's, it comes down to, you know, if you know the chops, if you know the, the little workarounds for a lot of that stuff. So. Yeah. No. No, that's cool. Very cool. Um, just quick thing. Into, uh, we're going to go back to the, uh, the knockoff site. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mel suggested that there's a cheap Chinese knockoff of Jake. That's that's not possible. They don't have that kind of technology. F- followed up by uh, Josh su- suggesting there's a Timu version of Jake. <laughs> <laughs> it's just inflatable, is all it is. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> Dude, Timu Timu is the worst. Like nobody should be using Timu. Yep. They, uh, a, a, a cousin of mine works for the. I forget who he works for. It's it's one of the federal agencies, and like they were they. Um, it's a, <clears throat> it's a um, like a commerce agency. So they like monitor like commerce and and like sales and business and stuff. And they were talking about how they did this big research poll, and they were like, "You have Timu being like we're a real business," and they're like, "But you're not," because there's so many fraudulent claims. And then the problem is that there's people that have it's like it's like Amazon, like people have access to sell stuff on Timu. Right, but Timu takes the responsibility for it because they own the company. So there are people who are using Timu as a platform who don't work for Timu, who are like yeah. taking your money and then you never get anything because it's not right. Timu. Yeah. And I was like, that's insane. Like, I feel like you should figure out a way to close that back door. And they're kind of like, I mean, that's how the architecture works. And it's like, well, maybe you should stop that. Yeah, <laughs> that is not good. <laughs> but, um, we've also been joined by uh, by Jez and Cal. Hi guys, uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, Steven has just arrived. Uh, fantastic. Um, and Matt Ball says, uh, if you can roll a green putty ball and make a green putty snake, you're on your way to being able to kit bash. Yeah. Bash yep. Yep. Th- that's, those are the two staples right there. Excellent. Cool. Well, <laughs> looking great. Uh, look forward to, uh, to seeing her painted. 
Mm. Well, yeah. thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to have her done in time to take to the show. So she'll oh, she'll, cool. uh, she'll be traveling with me. Very nice. Nice. Uh, we've seen Jake's. We talked about Jake's uh, models he's working on. And uh, for me, I've been assembling uh, drop pods. Oh, so man, those are cool. This month is the, uh, the speedy stuff for the army. So um, delivering you know, drop pods to deliver troops is, uh, is always a good one. Um, one of the things I will show, leading over there, and I'm just going to go back to this view for a minute. Um, what I do with my drop pods when I'm assembling them is I try to sort of put them all like that. If you hear something collapse, that's just the, the box holding them falling over. Uh, I'll put these in like this, and I'll put the other fin in there, prime them all, and do my airbrush work on it so I can get my sort of gradient gray down to the green, um, much like the vehicles that I did. But um, I leave uh, a, sort of a big enough gap in there so that I can take the uh, internal piece, all yeah, of the, the, cra the crash couch. Yep. Uh, let me open it out and put that inside like that. And then just, um, I've already trimmed off the little tabs from underneath, paint it all separate, and then just spin it a little bit to get it into place. And then put those last two pieces back in. <coughs> Classic Dave Taylor, folks. There we go. I think I've painted about. 20 drop pods over over time and that's I, i've discovered that's the best uh the best way to be able to get all the detail work inside and do them fairly quickly obviously there are other ways to do it like painting them all separately and then assembling the whole thing no are, are you a glue them all shut so i don't <laughs> i don't i don't run drop pods but if i did i feel like i would probably I, I'll probably just glue them all shut. Like I just don't. I like I just don't want to be bothered. Like it's like I have, I have a friend who paints the insides of all of his rhinos. He paints all the crew compartments. Yeah, and he has a couple that he glued shut. And I was like, "But you painted the inside." He's like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Why?" And he's like, "It would bug me because I I started painting them. I can't have some of them painted and some of them not." And I was like, "Even if you didn't glue the door shut and you open the door, you can't see that it's painted." Like. It, right. like it's i'm yeah. just like I, like i get it. it's your hobby like you do you yeah. i was like i'm not gonna do that <laughs> yeah. no i um like <clears throat> the, the drop pods doors able to, to open because when you put them on the table and yeah the doors, it looks better it, oh, it definitely does like, like i had a, I, had a, I had a dreadnought drop pod yeah that i painted and that one was easy because the dreadnought fits in it yeah, because it doesn't have anything inside. Right. So I was like, cool, awesome. It's a pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Um, well, Dan says that uh, hopefully that, that trick will come in handy when he starts getting his Sons of the Horror drop pods going. Very cool. Yeah, you, you like blew his mind a minute ago. He was like, wait, how do you do the inside separate? Yeah. <laughs> like this. It is a, a, little, a little tricky, but... Uh, do you uh do you magnetize the doors? No. No. There's enough um friction to hold them shut. Uh, particularly once there's a couple of layers of paint on there. Uh and and to be super fair, I probably won't get to play with them too much. <laughs> so I won't I won't have like a whole bunch of wear that <laughs> they're all of a sudden they'll be just flopping open all the time. But um uh yeah, magnetizing could be a way to go. I've seen that happen. I've seen people do that before. But yes. Uh, oh, Stephen says, I paint the backs of models even though they're going to be tucked away in a display. If they ever fell while on display, I would be absolutely mortified if people saw the backs unpainted. There's you, and there's Mike McVeigh, the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> but no, all good. Does, does Mike not paint the backs and stuff? Um, I, th I think it was kind of that's one of the things with the uh, a lot of those GW dioramas that 
we're only going to be seen from one angle. The backs of the models aren't painted because they had to get them done, had to get it finished. Got to be photographed for this book or this white dwarf. There were deadlines. But yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, also, Mel says he doesn't paint the, paint the inside of buildings. That's that's also fair. Unless there are windows you can see through. But um, anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Uh, so that's our hobby. That's what we've been up to. Uh, building, converting, painting. Hooray. Um, I also have a whole bunch of cool bikes. Yay. Those are cool. Yeah, those the, are really um, great. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, nice. That guy's, that guy's the best. Yeah. He's pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, I just have to get them based and paint it down. Hooray. Uh, so yeah, room you right along. The next uh, thing, I think now we're uh, ready to jump into the meat and potatoes of the, the episode. Oh, actually, no, sorry, my mistake. Before we get to that, we have our hot tips. So first hot tip is uh, Joaquin Palacios. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks um, for showing that during my show. <laughs> I must admit, I didn't. I completely did not. Even that. That's that. That is one of the top guys on my sculptor list right there. I love that guy's stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely uh, beautiful. This picture here is, of course, is a, is a sculpt. He wanted to practice doing portraits. Mm -hmm. uh, sculpted up a um, space wolf bust for Eric Swinson, uh, who he's done a whole bunch of work with. But uh, why out. not? <laughs> Sure. Yeah, check out his account, um, Joe Apala. So, uh, Joaquin Palacios, uh, link is down in the uh notes below, and you'll see loads of uh, fantastic sculpted miniatures. And then the next hot tip I've got is the Golden Demon Compendium. Uh, so this is uh, Matthew Avis, uh, he's part of the Cult of Paint team, uh, but he is put together a website which is drawing together as many of the uh, as many images of the uh, Golden Demon winners over the last 30 odd years um, as he can trying to bring them all together in one place where you can go through and search by artist you can search by event uh, I'm not sure if he's going to get to the point where he could search it by category probably um, and one of the other great things that he's just added is uh, an events list. So if you want to go to a wide variety of fantastic painting events, you can uh, check those out on that, uh, the events list that he has on the Golden Demon Compendium website. So um, definitely super cool. Uh, again, link to the Instagram is in the notes below. And then on these Instagram, pardon me, Instagram bio, uh, there's a link tree where you can uh, check out the website and a few other things that they have. Yeah. Jake, did you get your Instagram account fired up yet? Jake? Jake? Oh, me? Yes. yes. Yeah, did you get your Instagram <laughs> yeah. fired up? Did nope. you know? I, uh, <clears throat> uh, okay. If it was up to me, I would not exist on social media. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but you do. You do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Mel, Mel, bye, Mel. Oh, night, Mel. Night, Mel. <laughs> We're trying to have a good show for you. You can check it out in the replay tomorrow. Cool. Um, fantastic. Okay. Uh, what have we got? Oh, show minis. Let's hey, show look them. at that. Yep. There we go. Yep. <laughs> hey, I've got, I've got, got my new shirt on, ready for the show. So I've got these new, uh, the new logo. Finally, got the shirts in to, to take to it. Now I've got something new to wear to Adepticon. Nice. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Very cool. Uh, are you excited about going to Adepticon? Oh, man, I'm stoked. I, I, I can't even I can't even describe in words how awesome it is to me to be able to get back to that show. So, yeah, um, yeah that and, and ReaperCon, those are my two favorite uh, miniature based or miniature focus conventions. Yeah. Excellent. Um, ReaperCon over the last few years has been the Labor Day weekend. Is that right? Yeah, and that's. Uh, that, that was the only weekend that they could get it. Uh, the first time that they came to that new hotel convention center, it's the Hilton out in Denton. And um, uh, 
so they they did such big business that like so many people came to it that they decided, hey, we're just going to keep it on that weekend. Uh, and and it conflicts with Nova and Dragon Con, you know, for the same time slot. So I guess everybody's got to pick up side, you know, choose up sides and and go to the one. It, it's two hours, you know, from where we are. So that's kind of a it's a given that we'll go to that show. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it's it's so close. We we've been over this before. Like nobody, nobody in our industry pays attention to what anybody else is doing. Like mm -hmm. there's so many shows. It's like, oh, there's there's four shows that weekend. And you're like, why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> they they do it yeah. all the time. But um are, are they it's is it still gonna be the Labor Day weekend this year? Yeah, yeah. And okay, they right. they renewed the contract. They just had a, a thing about that on their little uh, their Reaper Live show uh, last week, uh, where they got the contract signed through for this year and next year, and then they'll have to renegotiate again. So we'll right. we'll see how it goes. Excellent. Uh, Mike says it's three hours from him uh, in Austin, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and Scott is going to Nova. Flight is booked. It's four planes to get there from here. Dude, oh man! How far? How deep into the Arctic Circle does he live? Uh, right. All the way. <laughs> like, it's, like he's like Santa Claus's actually, neighbor. Actually, Santa Claus. Yeah, he's, he's, he's in Santa's deep Canada. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, and Greg says, "Look, I appreciate them making me at least choose. I don't get enough time off to do all the conventions." <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Awesome. Um, okay, so let's jump in and talk about Bombshell <laughs> Minis and uh, and your sculpting career. Uh, oh wow! I've holy cow! Oh <laughs> yeah, this is this is ReaperCon last year. Uh, so yeah, we need some new banners. Or, or uh, yeah, that was last year. Yeah. So uh, we let's see. We launched Bombshell Miniatures in 2012 and oh. ran a Kickstarter for the the Babes line because uh, I was sculpting all of these girl character models or or. Uh, female character models, what, what are ladies, whatever however you want to refer to them. And um, I was doing that for all of these other companies, Dark Sword, Reaper, uh, and Privateer Press and that, that kind of thing. So I thought, well, it would be cool to do some sculpts, you know, that I want to do and, and see if I could kind of fill a little gap. And, and this was before, you know, uh, 3d printing was like a, a thing at all, you know? So, right. um, you had to actually manufacture the, the minis and, and all, all of that sort of thing. So, um, so we did pretty well on the Kickstarter and put out that first little line. And then we did a bunch of Kickstarters and stuff over the years after that. And um, it's been, I'm, I'm still, I'm still in the phase of pushing that boulder up the hill, you know, <laughs> waiting for it to get to the peak to, take off down the other side and we've tried a, a lot of different things uh we did the the counter blast game um and uh I'd actually we've done two different versions of that it's this is uh, second edition that we have on it uh oh and there's there's counter blast minis right there uh so that's all stuff that's that was sculpted um in putty except for the robots right so all of that stuff is hand sculpted um uh, from back in the day. Yeah. Um, and that's when I first started using ZBrush stuff was to do uh, those robots and the mechanical things. Um, there was a, how that kind of started up was, was right around 2012 is, was around the same time. And um, where uh, our house was in McKinney was uh, an hour from Reaper. And if you, if you go down this particular highway, right in between there, there was a guy that was running out of his house. It was called vision proto, which was a 3d printing service. And he had started off doing like medical valve parts for like <coughs> implants. And th I don't know exactly what stuff it was, but he had never really seen miniatures before, but I found him online and I said, well, Hey, I've, I've got some, some digital files that I'd like for you to test print for me. And so I would send him the files. He would print them. I would go and pick them up and then take them out to Reaper and they would master them. And so I told him, I said, well, this is where I'm getting these. And then I think that was around the same time that Bobby Jackson was experimenting with, you know, 3d sculpting and ZBrush. And, um, so he was, he, I think the, uh, the Rodmans over at, uh, um, 
Fortress figures were pr printing and casting stuff for him on the side. So that was when that kind of all started up. And it was really <laughs> kind of cool, like a, a couple of years after that, like going out there and to pick up my prints uh, from Paul, he, uh, he would have all of this stuff laid out after that. That was like, well, here's a, a Captain Picard head from uh, Sideshow Collectibles that he was uh, prototyping. <laughs> and then there was a bunch of privateer press stuff laying around. And, and it, it wasn't it wasn't stuff that I had sculpted because I was still doing practical stuff for for privateer at that point. But uh, anyway, yeah, it was just it was a weird it was kind of a surreal thing uh, seeing how that just took off in, in a very short amount of time. Right. And so he, like he was I'm sure he was pretty happy to be able to uh, sort of find a whole bunch of uh, sculptors. Who were looking yeah. For yeah. It really, really expanded his business. Uh, so, and then sh shortly after that, he, he wound up th with uh, some changes and stuff in, in his family. I think someone had uh, passed away and left him some property or something. I'm not sure what the story was, but he moved to Florida. And so, uh, but then, you know, by then uh, 3d printers were starting to, to kind of proliferate, you know, where it wasn't like an, uh, you know, $80,000 machine, you know, that you'd have to, to order from Italy or whatever, you know? So, yeah. No, that's cool. Um, going back to uh, sort of the pre pre digital sculpting, uh, that kind of thing, the, the traditional mm -hmm. sculpting. Um, that's that's what you started with. Mm -hmm. Your sculpting um, and you started with sculpting minis in in two thousand and four. Uh, you mentioned before, so like sitting now with, with uh, one o'clock at Revicon and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, what was your what was your process, I guess, for, for learning to sculpt? Like, were you spending well, a lot of time talking to other sculptors? Were you watching, watching videos on, well, actually YouTube wasn't really. Yeah. YouTube. YouTube wasn't a thing. <laughs> so it was, uh, yeah, it was, was it was really, and how it, how it started out. Like when I first met the, uh, when I first met the guys from Reaper uh, with Ed and Dave and well, what's funny about that is, is, is that, well, I was um, I was a manager at our local game store, comic book store, uh, and Ron, the art director at Reaper, was a customer of mine, and and he would come in. And so uh, when I got invited to to go out and visit the shop, I, I went in, and uh, I was talking to the guys, and you know, kind of showing them my stuff, and and I was like, "There's that guy that's that's my customer that comes in and talks to me about painting stuff." So it's that's yeah. that's how long Ron and I go back, but. Um, but as far as the sculpting goes, uh, I, I was really using Milliput because I didn't really know. I, I mean, I had seen pictures in White Dwarf magazine that is like, well, here's this green material that they're sculpting the stuff out of. But I didn't know what it was called or where to get it or or any of that. Uh, so when I went and visited the Reaper guys, Dave, uh, or actually it was Ed, he gave me a little package of green stuff and like a, uh, some little sculpting tool Um I guess the little oiler things to make rivets and, you know, here's, here's like a little bundle of stuff, go here and try that. And so I went away and, and noodled around with it at home and had made some really awful looking things. And I, I've, I've got a picture of them somewhere on the, on the internet. Uh, I think if you go over to patrickkeith.com, my old hobby blog is still online. And I think there's pictures of that old stuff that you can, if you want to look at it, it's on there. Um, <laughs> But I, I really hated it because, I mean, it was like it was like sculpting with a bubble gum. I was I was like, I still couldn't figure out. It's like, well, how do they because I, I just mixed up the stuff and like tried to sculpt the whole thing because I was used to using polymer clay where it's like, well, you can sculpt on polymer clay as long as you want. And then, you know, you bake it and then it's, you know, and then you can, I can actually bake it in stages. So I was really following a lot of the garage kit guys that were doing that kind of stuff. But when I talked to them about production, they were like, well, we use the green stuff because. Um, well, Tom Meyer, you know, back in Ralph Partha, he was the one that discovered this stuff that was like, well, it was the only thing that they could find that was durable that would that would fit in the black rubber molds, you know, to do spin oh. casting. And so that was why it kind of stuck as sort of an industry standard. It's like, well, everybody's using that because everybody's spin casting their stuff and we need a material that will survive that process of production. So I thought, okay, well, this if this is what they're using, then that's what I'm going to use. And so I, I worked with green stuff for a while and then, you know, you talk to other sculptors and particularly, you know, going to ReaperCon and meeting some of the other sculptors there. It's like, well, everybody's got their own way of doing stuff. It's like Jason Wiebe would take 
uh, like Abe's epoxy sculpt or something like that and mix it with the green stuff. And he would get a particular kind of feel for the material and it, it had certain properties to it. So you try that, you try mixing it with the brown. Oh, uh oh, no. <laughs> he was going to say brown stuff there, folks. Brown stuff. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I just got a bunch of uh, gray stuff in stock from uh, Gale Force 9. Okay. I just restocked that. That stuff's great. Yeah. Have you uh, make, Have you tried mixing that with... I haven't mixed it with I haven't mixed it with green stuff. Um, I've used it I've used it before to like gap fill. Like I built a model that was that was like missing a couple pieces, um, and it was big enough that I couldn't use liquid green stuff, but it was small enough that I couldn't really like get a sprue in there. But it was like super noticeable. It was like in a it was a guy who was like this, so there was like a hole under his arm, like a triangle. Right. So I basically just got a little bit of gray stuff, and I basically like used it like peanut butter. And just kind of like worked it in and then I let it dry. And then once it dried, I used like an exacto knife and I cut off the extra and then sanded it and it looked great. Um, gray stuff is different though. Cause like when it dries, it, it, it basically turns into plastic. Whereas green stuff does not. It's like, you can all green stuff is like old gum. If you work it enough, you mm -hmm. can always kind of bring it back. So. Okay. You know, wait, wait, like I'm, I'm back now. So yeah, I, I don't know what happened with that. You, uh, you, got, you got to brown stuff. And, I got uh, the brown stuff. And, well, and my, and, not the brown stuff you think. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Jake was mentioning the gray stuff, and um, at Gen Con every year, like Sandy Garrity would have like a sculptors meeting, so where you'd invite sculptors and stuff. And uh, the guys at Craft Mart came one year and gave free samples of uh, Procreate to everybody, and it was like, here, try it out. Let me know what you think. You know, so we gave him some. You know, I took it home and sculpted some stuff with it. So, oh, this is really great because it wasn't as gooey as the green stuff was. It was more, well, I mean, and, and the guys, you know, they formulated it specifically for sculpted miniatures. So it was okay. like, and they used to work at polymeric systems that made green stuff. So it was like, well, we've got kind of an industry inside on, you know, how this stuff is made. So uh, I became a really big uh, proponent of the gray stuff, you know, for a while. And then um, uh, I saw Patrick, that- Patrick, you might be able to answer that. Uh, Jez has a question. He goes- Okay. He said, "Gray stuff sounds like humbral plasto." Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm not. I don't know it by that particular name. Um, uh, humbral. I know Humbral's a big model company. Like they're huge. Like in, yeah, they do. They do model Europe, paint, and I know and they make a lot of their own like uh, hobbying modeling supplies. Uh -huh. So it's probably similar. But I, 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 I would I, think I, I'd have to look it up and see. You know, if it's like a two part kind of a a putty type type of thing it might be it might be very similar to that and it, it i don't know if it's you know distributed by them uh, or if craft mark makes it to you know for humbrol to distribute over there I, I i don't know i'd have to see about that um i'm kind of now that i've been doing digital for you know as, as i'm kind of out of the putty loop uh as, as much as i used to be <coughs> um I but i i was using um uh, i was using gray stuff and then uh let's see uh, Stefan over at uh, uh, oh let's see what was that uh, he had he had started manufacturing bees putty and uh, and it, it was really cool because this was a polymer clay and I had used polymer clay before but he was formulating it to where it was kind of a sticky polymer clay and I don't know if you guys have ever used um, super sculpey or or femo or any of that kind of thing it's a very dry kind of a clay and so if you've got, uh, if you bake a piece and then you try to take another raw piece and stick it on there and sculpt on it, it won't stick. You've got to do stuff to it. You've got to put Vaseline or something on it in order to get it to stick, which is the opposite of what you would do with like green stuff or like a two-part epoxy putty. Um, but, uh, but he had formulated it where it's like, well, you can just sculpt and sculpt and sculpt with this bees putty stuff. And so... I, I ordered a bunch of that and was using that for a lot of sculpts. And this was when, um, or after the confrontation came out and it's like all of the amazing confrontation models were all sculpted in, you know, like polymer clay. And we were like, well, how are they, how are they, what, what kind of production process are they using? And it, it turns out it's like, well, they're, they're going to take resin masters and then make their molds and stuff out of that. And some of those molds were, I think silicon molds where it was like, well, you can just put it right in there and, uh, 
eventually, um, I think the guys at Valiant that were casting the bombshell stuff, they, they were, um, they were able to take my polymer clay pieces and, and put them directly on mold for a little bit and they, but they didn't survive. So then we started going to resin masters on that. So I would do a sculpt and then I would send it to them. They would put it in, in the silicon drop mold and run 10 or 15 resin pieces out of that and then put those on their, their uh, spin cast mold. And then those would go into production for metal. So right. <coughs> was that, is that more than you wanted to know? I think that's, that's more than no, no, no. I think it's, I mean, that, covers, that covers the whole range of things. There. No, I, right, I wrote that right. all down. I wrote, I, I'm going to start my own uh, sculpting business. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is how it works. You know. It's, yeah. So essentially, there was a, there was a certainly a lot of um, talking with other folks. Um, sort of. Yeah, they, there's they, a, they were the punctuations in in periods of exploring it and trying different things out each time. So you'd talk to somebody, find yep. a new material. Yeah, trying, yeah, but um, mm -hmm. somebody finding new material. Exactly, but before there was YouTube or, or really the internet, um, there there wasn't really any any place to find any information about it other than you go to conventions or you find other sculptors and and it's like, hey, I'm trying to make this thing, and then you talk to them, you know, at a show or or whatever, and it's like, oh well, you know, because everybody's that's the cool thing about this industry is everybody's very free with their information about it because we all love the hobby, we all love what we do. And you know, it's, it's like, even like if you're painting something, it's like, Ooh, I want to paint this thing and take a picture of it and put it online. So everybody can see, Oh, look, I painted the thing, you know, and sculpting is the same way. It's like, well, uh, I've figured out how to do a thing. So I kind of want to share that with my buddies that like doing the same type of stuff. So it, it was very easy to find other sculptors, you know, like if, if they're going to be at like a Reaper con or something like that, it's like, well, Hey, I'm trying to use this material. I'm trying to get it to do this. What do you do? And and if they're sitting there like they would at ReaperCon, it's like, well, they've got all their sculpting stuff sitting out. So they're, they would just show you. And it's like, oh, well, if you're trying to do that, uh, you just do it like this. Or, or here you, here's how to make chain mail. You know, it's like, oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's, yep. now I've just got to practice that, you know, to be Tom Meyer. So, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's yep. yeah. Excellent. Now I can remember the, uh, the, the first uh, Adepticon that I went to was 2005. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was a guest, and uh, Gary Morley was a guest. So, oh, cool! Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I was sitting down next to Gary Morley, and I was converting models, and he was sculpting mm -hmm. models. And so it was like, okay, cool. How did how did you do that? How did, <laughs> right. I, head? What do I do with that face? How do yeah. I make those eye sockets? Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> were Were you actually converting Gary Morley sculpted models? That would have been no, even cooler. <laughs> no, that would have been that would have been awesome, but uh, no, sadly not. Sadly, not. Yeah. right? Yeah. Every time Gary, every time Gary finished to put one down, Dave like picked it up, and was like, Take your thumb off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. What? Well, I, I used to do that with with Jess Goodwin's Eldar. It's like you know when I as I was just painting them, it's like I would look at them, you know, through the magnifier, and it's like and try to kind of deconstruct okay well how did he do what he was doing you know i right. you know when i first started painting miniatures i had no idea how they were made it was like oh look there's these little metal guys you know i didn't even know why they were in metal uh like when i was in middle school i was like the, uh, all the other model kits that i ever like plastic and stuff why are these metal i, I don't know i didn't get it you know until later so oh, excellent excellent so uh the next um Next photo that we've got on the uh, the slideshow here is uh, from your uh, range. Let me uh, let's pull this up. Yep, cool. Still oh, okay. Yeah, the uh, oh, Vivian cool. Gale. Yeah, that's our our deep sea diver, and this character is based on some art uh, by Izzy Collier uh, that she had done from our first Babes Kickstarter project. It was actually a piece that she had existing and was just kind of had it in her inventory. It was like, Hey, you want to, you want to buy this piece and sculpt it? And I was like, of course, you know, so, uh, I've, we've got a little smaller 30 millimeter, 32, whatever, um, 28 version of that, uh, that I sculpted in putty. But, uh, this one I did as part of the, um, my mini factory tribes thing, which is, is running right now. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so this is a STL file that you can download over there. And then we sell 3D prints of it on our web store uh, on bombshell.com. 
Dumb, bomb show minis dot com. Minis. Cool. How do you um? How do you figure out like what scales you're going to print something in? Uh, you, you mean well, as far as like sculpt something for? I guess yeah. Well, like she's uh she's what she's a seventy five millimeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like you wouldn't you wouldn't play a game with that really, right? It'd be twenty eight mil or thirty two mil or something. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if I was going to print that at that size, probably like a lot of the details wouldn't print. Uh, so for example, there's, there's etched, uh, like pock marks and so forth on her boots, uh, in that area. And there's some wood grain and stuff that's on the, <laughs> on the spear gun on the, uh, stock on there yep. and that kind of thing. I think some of the feathers, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the feathers, on the Pelican wouldn't come out uh, just because if you're just going to take that sculpt and scale it down, then the limitations of the 3d printing process, it, it wouldn't, that it wouldn't be as prevalent, you know, in, in something that size. So what I would have to do is if I was going to, I would have to do another version of this model where it's like, I would scale that down and basically just go and punch up those details uh, and then print that, you know, at that size. Right. So it's, it's doable. Uh, it just takes a little bit of extra work. And, and the reverse is true. If I'm sculpting something specifically for, you know, game scale, then it's like, well, weapons and, and uh, you know, pouches and straps and all of that kind of detail needs to be exaggerated. And when you just scale it up and it's like, well, I'm going to just take this game scale thing and print it out at 75 millimeters. It's, it looks, it looks like that's what you did. It looks like, you know, this size. Where it's like, if you go and look at, you know, like you showed Joaquin Palacios before, it's like, well, his stuff is specifically sculpted, you know, to be printed at that particular size. And right. so the, the details and the proportions and all of that stuff are, are different depending on the different scales that, that you're going to print those at. No. Um, and that's just something that you kind of have to, you got to eyeball it. You got to, you got to track it, you know, um, if you're not familiar with sculpting specifically for miniature production. So, yeah. Again, so if you, if you were to print her at 75 mil, like how, how big is that? It's like three inches tall. Yeah. So 75 millimeters. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, Cause if, if 25 millimeters is an inch, then three of those is going to be okay. Yeah. The what's, um, the, what's the biggest thing you've done? <laughs> Hang on. Before we, before we jump into that, I've got a question for you on it. Okay. Okay. And this is this is me not, um, I, I guess, I'm getting a little bit confused because of the way that you can manipulate images on a screen. Uh -huh. it, that if you're at seventy five mill, working at seventy five millimeters, and you say you like you scale the sculpt down, and then punch up some of the details. Uh huh. But to punch up those details, you'll need to zoom in, right? So that yeah. the model looks as big as, as 75 right. on the screen. So is there, yeah. is there some sort of inception confusion that goes on sometimes? What yeah. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, you, you can get kind of lost. Um, wh what I've got is I've got a little tool inside of my ZBrush file that I've, I've built. That's just basically, it's just a simple ruler and uh, okay. it's um, it's just a stick with like millimeters marked on it. And right. then I've got down at the bottom of it, I've got, you know, it's, it's 50 millimeters tall and then it's 50 millimeters, um, on the X, X axis and the Z axis. Okay. So I can see that it's like, okay, well, this is how big, you know, a 25 or a 50 millimeter base would be. And I've also made, uh, 25, 30, 28, you know, different sized bases that I can put my model on and gauge, um, uh, well, this is how tall it's going to be, or this is how big it's going to be proportionally. Um, and that's that. And that's something that it's, it's like, well, you, you kind of have to have the experience of understanding what those practical models look like. And that's why I, I, I think a lot of the early models, the early 3d stuff where they were coming from the sculptors or the 3d character artists were coming from, um, video games and from from that industry and and you know and and people were you know hiring these freelancers to hey sculpt my thing and then they would get this model it's like well it's not printable because you know you can't have like a um 
a cape that's less than one millimeter thick that it's it's going to print and it's going to hold up and then if you're going to go into production with it whether it's going to be resin production or metal production or anything like that it's just it's not going to survive that production process it's not going to come out so that's something that you have to learn by eye and by feel through experience of just you know repetitive work it's like well i'm gonna i'm gonna sculpt this thing and and then even starting in the 3d process you you know it's like well this is how i would make a pouch or this is how i would make you know a figure or a, a sword or whatever it's going to be and you know that it's like well i can put the calipers on it because it's like well i keep you know these digital calipers and stuff on my desk so it's like well i can measure other miniatures and it's like well how big is this thing you know in the real space and then i'll just put that up against my little ruler in zbrush and see okay well it's not a millimeter and it's like well her like her spear gun uh yeah. the spear on it is at least two millimeters thick and i know that it has to be two millimeters otherwise when you know when it's printed or, or if it was going to be produced uh as far as resin cast it's it's got to be that thick for the material to flow into the mold, you know. Right. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's all it, it's a it's a, a it's a little toolbox of stuff. It's it's looking at it by sight and by feel, and it's also measuring it physically to, to make sure that it's the size that it needs to be. Right. Okay. So, cool. Yeah. No, thank you for that. Sure. I have a better understanding now. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks, Jake. Uh, back to your question. What's the uh, I was going to do what's the biggest i was going to say what's what's the biggest thing you've sculpted um but before we jump to that talking about the millimeter size and stuff uh -huh. right now right now like i work with another company where and we're printing minis for a tabletop war game and one of the things we had to worry about dealing with a lot of the printer the the digital sculptors we hired was having them understand that like there's different weapon options mm -hmm. and they were like what do you mean i was like so you need to sculpt him in a position where i can remove his arms and put different arms on him and he'll be armed the same way. And the guy was like, well, I just sculpt another whole guy. And I was like, right, but like, we don't necessarily want to do that. We want to be able to use all the miniatures. Um, I think that's one of the smartest things I think Games Workshop has going for them is uh -huh. that when you buy a sprue, the way that everything is laid out on the sprue, like that's a whole other, that's not even artistry. That is that is math to like the art part. Like you need an engineer who's like, how can I cut this up so that it'll fit onto a, you know, a, a, a frame that mm -hmm. we can package it that it's easy to, to like have instructions for. And like, I'm always blown away by that, especially a lot of the newer kits that have so many parts. Yeah. Well, well doing it in the, in the digital space is a whole lot easier than doing it practically. And I, and I can say that from experience because back in the day, it's like, well, you know, even, even if you're looking at like, like Eldar figures, well, it's like, well, I don't have them handy. I had some little Skaven and I've, there's like three Skaven guys and they're, it's the same guy. Okay. It's the same sculpt and you know that it's like, well, this was done practically in putty, but how it was done was it's like, well, the, the first sculpt was done up to a certain level. So it's like, it's going to be his head. It's going to be his torso, you know, whatever his, his body is and his legs in a particular pose. Then they would take that partial sculpt and master it. And you're going to get a bunch of metal castings off of that. And then it's like, okay, well now I can put this halberd on him or this you know he's got two weapons or you know that kind of thing and these the all of these conversions were done off of that initial master or yeah. and so so then you get iterations of it now it's, it's <coughs> like they they look like three different guys but they're really the same guy and there's some eldar and stuff that are done like that and that's that's when i really first started to notice it's like that's the same guy he's just got a different gun or he's got a different decoration on his, or a different helmet or something like that so, uh, but in the digital space, it, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to move to sculpting digitally was to do conversion iterations like that. Um, there, there's a, uh, well, bef before I get to that thought, uh, the cool thing about that is, is that, you know, you can copy and, and, and replicate these parts in the digital space. So it's like, well, I've got the, I've got the one base model and then I can make iterations of poses off of that, or I can swap the weapons out and it's super easy to do even that it's like, well, it's the same pose. And then you just take and swap the gun out, <laughs> you know, where it's like, you don't even have to have a separate arm or anything for it. It's like, or it's a, I'm just going to take and copy that arm and paste it. And now it. No. Oh. Froze so again. <laughs> so close. <laughs> I think, I think one of the craziest things about looking at some of the older sculpts 
and looking at some of the newer sculpts and like like you mentioned jess like like jess, jess goodwin is like one of my favorites of all time his stuff is so good yeah. uh and you go back and you look at his minis and he was so good about capturing movement particularly during the time period where you were trapped in like two-dimensional printing oh there we go there's so there, there it is you're back uh, i'm <laughs> cool. back uh awesome uh, uh i I did think I finished that thought though on that. So what what did I miss while I was away? Because you guys have put the rocket ship up. <laughs> oh, I was just I was talking about you. You had mentioned Jez Goodwin, and I was talking about how Jez was a master of like uh -huh. getting so much motion and action, but being trapped in two dimensions. Yeah, yeah. It's back before GW started doing this, where you could have characters coming towards you. It was right, all every, like everything had to fit in the in the rubber mold. Yeah, but he so. but he was so good at it. Like you look at his, you look at the old aspect warriors, and the reason they haven't upgraded them until basically just recently is they because they they still work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was just looking at those old striking scorpions uh, this last weekend. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's amazing. Definitely cool. We've had some uh, good good chat going on, uh, good chatter going on in the chat. Uh, I've seen that. Yeah, it's it's been, <laughs> yeah. Matt used to sit uh, next to Chris Fitzpatrick, who was uh -huh. at the HQ sculpting the Dark Elder. It was amazing. Um, wow, cool. Uh, Stephen says the the problem with some three D sculpts as a painter is the paintability of some of the digital sculpts that are scaled down from fifty to or seventy five down to thirty. Mm -hmm. I can make the paint job very difficult. Exactly. I think um, that's something that, that Patrick covered there. Need to work mm -hmm. on that different different detailing, different level of detailing mm -hmm. as it gets smaller. Uh, yeah. Matt Bulls had mentioned uh, the Scarecrone figure, and that's the first Scarecrone. The small one is actually a practical sculpt that I did in putty. And so the new one is actually a digital ZBrush sculpt. So okay. that's that's also one of the reasons why they're so different from each other. So cool. Excellent. Uh, and uh, Jez um, says in there that uh, there's a channel called Film Deg Miniatures that had an interview with Trish Carden recently. Um, fascinating. Yep. <coughs> I, I, that's in my queue on YouTube to watch that. I haven't gotten a chance to see it yet, but uh, Trish has been, uh, she's been very generous online. Uh, we've been posting stuff back and forth. She is super awesome. And I, I like uh, all of her stuff. It's, that's great. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely super cool. Um, mm -hmm. I, I thought uh, I'd bring this up because one of um, Jake's questions was, uh, what's the biggest model you've sculpted? Right. And, uh, sure and it's, yeah, this is a big model. Uh, I don't, I don't know. See that because of what it is, I don't really consider that sculpting. This is more like model building in 3d. Um, okay. as, and, and to, and also sculpting digitally, it's like it, it, it sculpting in ZBrush. It doesn't really matter how big the thing's going to be printed. You know, it's like, it, it does as far as like the proportions of the details go, like we were talking about straps yeah. or, or sword blades or, you know, that kind of stuff. But, um, but I mean, you can literally just sculpt whatever you want and then just print it whatever size you want. So, uh, but as far as like the biggest thing that I've ever sculpted, I, because I kind of come out of the garage kit, um, but, you know, right. um, polymer clay kind of thing, you know, back when, um, before I started doing game stuff, um, it was, I did a, a big one six, what is, what is it? One six scale. Yeah. Right. I did a big, uh, spider, the, um, Loth, the spider queen. Right. I did oh, a, nice. big, okay. a big yep. sculpt of that. And then, um, I did like a big Valkyrie, uh, that was like 12 inches tall. And, and again, you know, this was very early. They weren't very good, <laughs> you know? Uh, and then I did a bunch of little mixed media things that were like eight inches tall that I did like a little pirate and like a little fair, uh, several little fairy things and all this, you know, uh, as I was kind of making my rounds through the polymer clay community. But, um, and I think some of those pictures are over on patrickheath.com too. I think I've, I've got like a little gallery of that stuff from the way it's all, it's all behind a paywall with his foot stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> only sculpted feet. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, that's cool. Um, definitely cool. So definitely, uh, make sure you go and check out that, uh, patrickheath.com. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of my side stuff i post <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> excellent the uh the next pick that i've got here is uh one that I, I it was just like this is so so wonderfully creepy 
Uh, I'm not sure you're going to be able to guess which one it is. So. I yeah, I I don't know. It's this has all been. Oh, okay. The, okay, yeah, right. The cloning array. Yeah, yeah. it's all good. I see. Flash Gordon is going to save the day. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and and that that little figure, um, which I've got, I've got one of those on my on my workbench right here. Awesome. And, and once I sculpted it, I was like, okay, here's going to be my base human. Like I'm just going to use that as like, you know, to reference. This is how big everything is. Uh, right. So I've got one of those files in like everything, every file that I sculpt from. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how I got this idea. I know we had, we had a bunch of those little, um, we we call them the T8 domes because they're eight millimeters across. Uh, but we had these little bell jar plastic, uh, clear plastic domes made for uh, the bubble helmets on for some of our figures. And I had like I have tons of them. I have a bunch of them left over. So I thought, well, how can I use these up and you know, after seeing, uh, what was it, like Attack of the Clones, I had that idea stuck in my head that was like, you know, I could do some kind of like cloning thing. And it's all modular. So it's like, you know, you could take two of these kits and like stack them as tall as you want and then, you know, populate your entire gaming board or whatever with it. And uh, it'd be kind of a cool objective thing to like fight through without hitting, you know, the cloning array, you know. Uh, right. And I kind of <laughs> wanted to do like an accessory sprue that's got like, you know, fish, or some other thing, you know, like whatever else you could put that you would grow in a tank, you know, in there. So I don't know, but uh, yeah, it was, it was fun to do and figuring out how to get all the hoses and the things to like not intersect, you know, it's was, all like you can make like tricky. little, impo little impossible burgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dan, Dan uh, took the words right out of my mouth and he said the it's a real sort of matrix vibe. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Right. That, that's that's another thing. That's it. yeah. You could kind of you kind of get the matrix thing from that too. Yeah. yeah. The copper top setup. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. I wonder if uh, like just one level of that and yeah, just just one level of the clones they would uh, fit inside the drop pod. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that that's kind of cool. Yeah. It's like hey, like seed these planets, you know, and just grow them up. It's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be uh, absolutely wild, but yep. uh, no, I, I I love this, so which is why I uh, why I grabbed it. To, I think uh -huh. it's pretty great. I, I need to come up with a nanny bot or something for that, where it's like you know, she's got little diapers or whatever, just waiting for him to hatch out. Or I don't know. Yeah, so, yeah, it's very it, it's very pulp. You know, I, I like that whole pulp sci fi kind of vibe anyway. So yeah, you got to make her look like uh, Rosie from the Jetsons. Exactly. Like, that's that's like exactly what I was that. thinking. Right. <laughs> or or whatever those waitresses were like in the Star Wars movie where they're in the diner. Yeah. And they've got the little the, the little mono wheel that's yep, running around. Awesome. Something, something like that. Yeah. 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 That, that would be my fear though, Jay, as a face hugger in everyone. <laughs> but no, they look, uh, it looks awesome. It's awesome. Um, I think, yeah. So, I know that you're uh, you're still doing uh, sort of commission work for a whole bunch of different companies. Uh, who are you who are you working with? What sort of so you've done some stuff for. Uh, oh, have we got another freeze? Oh yeah. man! Ah, oh, curses! Um, we we can just like, make stuff up. Who he's working for? Well, we don't even have to do that, but uh, because we will jump in and tell uh, Scott's story, which is my crazy uncle Klaus used to make function, functioning scale steam engines in his machine shop. They were too big and heavy to move, so he'd always have to scrap them when he was done. I guess the the journey was the uh, was the important thing. So, you forgot that he bookended that story with he was crazy, right? Yes. <laughs> so there we go. Okay. Uh, back. Cool. I was just commenting at, you know, before we started the show that it's like, oh yeah, it was cool that we moved down here and now I've got it, you know, reliable internet connection. I shouldn't have ever said anything about that. No, no, you never jinxed it. You never <laughs> just jinxed, jinxed it. it, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, the question was, uh, who who are you doing uh, commission work for at the moment? <laughs> no, like, when I say at the moment, I mean over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, my uh, continuing... Uh, clients are DGS Games, uh, who I, I really enjoy working for because they've got really cool concept art and um, fun ideas to work on. Uh, and I like, uh, Jennifer's a great art director. I like working with her. Um, she's cool. she's really great to get along with. And Victoria Miniatures, uh, that's she's one of my favorite clients. 
of course, you know, Victoria is, is a legend, you know, anyway, in the hobby community. And I was a big fan of her work. Um, you know, as I had first started sculpting, as I was kind of, you know, working on painting and sculpting miniatures and stuff back when I first started up, I was, you know, seeing her, uh, stuff posted. And then, uh, I got to meet her at ReaperCon. She came one year and, and we talked and she was like, well, Hey, um, you know, I, if I was going to have something sculpted, I might contact you. And I was like, great, please do, <laughs> you know? That was and a, so that was a terrible Australian accent. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> from authentic, authentic there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, but it's, it's, I, that's one of the, the fun things I like about talking to her over Skype. Uh, and that's, that's really the cool thing about the internet and being in the business that we're, we're in is, is hearing all of the different dialects from where, you know, everybody's from. And I always get the thing that, you know, it's like, well, you don't really sound like you're from Texas because I'm not, Oh, Hey y'all. And all the thing, you know? Yep. And so uh, that's cause I did, you know, tech support and worked at a help desk for a while. So I've tried to be, you know, neutral on that. Did, uh, did Victoria try to pay you in, uh, in gasoline? Uh, gu gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, but, uh, but she's, um, uh, but she's very prompt with that though. So that's another, another cool thing about working with her as a client. No, Victoria's yeah. awesome. We had Victoria yeah. on. Uh, I saw that show. Years. Yeah. That's, that, that was great. So I, and I did, um, I did her Adepticon sculpt for this year again. Uh, so I did two, two or three previously. Uh, I, I'd have to look at them. I, I guess I should have sent you pictures of those, but I'm going to, I'll be po posting those later um, again. Like, yeah. Hey, look what I did, you know. <laughs> yeah. Post, but yeah. them in the, uh, post them in the Facebook yeah. group. We'd love to see them. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll have to commission you. We'll have to do a, uh, a sprue of heads. You can do like some Dave heads and some Jake heads. We can do a bunch of Space Marines. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, I and I I have, was I was working on some heads for for something else. So I've got I've got Primaris collars and whatever the like the earpiece is. Like I, that's already built. All I've got to do is just do the face and put it in. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, and it, they're already scaled, ready to go that fit in those, uh, in those torsos. Yeah. Dude, Excellent. that's awesome. Excellent. We'll, um, we'll talk, we'll talk about it. <laughs> uh, Mike Becker's WN and says, uh, Patrick does a lot out of y'all from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, now Vicky, v Vicky sounds very Texan. So if you talk to her at one of the shows, you know, you're going to get that, that Texas drawl from her, her uh, quite quite a bit i mean uh and it, and it gets worse whenever she's around her family it's it's very thick yeah right <laughs> awesome mm -hmm. that's cool uh but yes uh matt bowles says uh oh what's the adepticon sculpt because I, I think we mentioned it in the uh oh right yeah yeah we were gonna we were teasing that it's like oh hey it's gonna be premiered during the show so yeah we'll want to want to get that, that, that yeah moment. so everybody uh hit your uh your time stamps stamps of uh one hour 17. <laughs> Are we ready? So, uh, do you want to give a bit of a build up to it before I? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it's 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 completely inspired by the old world, right? Okay, because the old world is like a big thing now. And um, I was looking through. I did the uh, I did a video on our YouTube channel where I I got my Warhammer box out of the attic and looked through it and it's like, oh, look at all this cool Bretonian stuff and oh, here's the thing and uh, and I had the little sorceress, you know, the original one that was on the. Uh, horseback and and the one on foot and so uh, and that's kind of a cool sculpt you know and I I, I don't remember who sculpted it I should but uh, I don't remember but it was cool and then they redid really it uh, because I think Forge World has got like a new resin version of it that where she's like standing on a rock and you know with the little scepter thing and all this and I was like man those are cool models and I was, I was like you know what I know how to sculpt. I'm just going to sculpt one. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I did. And so uh, yeah, I've got, uh, I've got that ready to go. It's, it's actually, I've got the first batch of them printing right wow. now. So this is our, um, and I, let's see, what are, Je t'aime de fay is, is what we're going to call her. Uh, and so I've got. Um, so is this, is this the, like the bombshell minis exclusive for. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, it's not going to be exclusive to Adepticon, but this is our okay. convention mini this year. So we're going to have copies of this for sale only during the weekend of uh, the conventions that we're going to be at. So we'll be at Adepticon and we'll have it in our web store where you can buy them. And uh, okay. I, I, you, I, I, can, 
Yeah, and I, I kind of got that idea of, the, you know, because Pri Privateer Press was doing that. I don't know if they're still doing it uh, for a while where you could get their little, because I sculpted that, um, what is it, Druid Gone Wilder thing. And uh, and it was cool because they would always offer it, you know, during the shows that they were going to be at. So it was kind of a limited deal. Um, so we thought, okay, well, I can do that too. Um, so you can buy them online and then I'm going to have a limited number of them at Adepticon so you can buy them there. And our booth is going to be like, if you, if you go in the front hall, there's going to be the Reaper booth and they were gracious enough to give us the booth right behind them. So we're right next to the Reaper booth. There's going to be trench works and a uh, knuckle duster and we're all kind of like right together there. So yeah, come by and, and snag one of those if you're going to be at the show. So um, is, we'll, is this, yeah. is this your miniature for the show or is this the Adepticon miniature? No, this is the bombshell uh, okay. miniature for the show. Yeah, oh, nice. I, I talked. I talked to the. Uh, I, I sent them. I've done uh, a couple of Adepticon, the official Adepticon sculpts, years prior to that. But I think because of their schedule, and I kind of got in late on the game this year, that I wasn't able to to get something done for them. But uh, I don't know. Who knows? In the future, I may do. I may be able to do another one at some point. So, uh, but I've I've actually got three conventions at the show this year because I've got this one that we're going to have at the bombshell booth and then um, Victoria is going to have hers either at the Reaper or the Trenchworks booth so the one that I sculpted she's going to be selling there um, she's not going to be coming to the show but they're going to have the mini at the at the booth there it's, and then I sculpted probably, another probably Trenchworks they had Trenchworks had her stuff last year so yeah I think they're doing the production stuff on it yeah, yeah. so um and then I, I did a, a little Betty Grable pinup, um, World War II uniform, kind of, it's just kind of like, a, what is it, Agent Carter type thing? Yep. Uh, it's a little historical figure for Warlord games. And uh, you're going to get one of those free with a $75 a Warlord booth. So a certain number of those there. I don't know if they're going to disclose the number of that. So I'm not going to say. But uh, yeah, I sculpted that. So, uh, and, and I'm hoping to, to paint some of those. So we'll have them on display so you can kind of see what they look like. Um, and that thing that I've, I've had to do before going to the show. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, cool. yeah. So this is my, this is my take on the, uh, you know, kind of a French sort of sorceress. And the cool thing about it is, is that you can't really trademark the fleur de lis because it's kind of a, you know, an iconic thing from like, you know, way back. So I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to put those all over it, you know? So yeah. I can get away with that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, she looks fantastic. I think, uh, Thank you. Thanks. Also, I've, yeah, that's yeah, gonna, a little... be a lot of fun, uh, painting all those those flowing lines. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, hang yeah. on a second. I'll, uh, I'll I'll adjust it so that you're oh, yeah. uh, you're nice and big. We'll put you there. I don't. I, you can hold it I, don't I don't know if camera. I don't know if she'll if she'll be in focus or not. But but you can see there's no, my little test print. So yeah, it came out okay. As they, uh, let's let's see. I don't know if I can do, even do that. Yeah, if it'll put, yeah, put your hand behind it. I was going to say, yeah, put your hand behind it. And That's what everybody loves to bit. see on the internet. Back up, back up, back up. Yeah. That's still not going to do it. Oh, there it goes. There Look, yeah, there okay, go. yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So I've got a little batch of those, and then uh, and then it's not going to focus on me again. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but there, I've got, I got five printers running with those, you know, tonight, and then I'll just keep running them until we hit, you know, a pretty good, amount of them um right but uh <laughs> i i kind of wanted to add the like you were talking about the the flowing lines and stuff on it with the the robes and everything i had done a lot of sculpting in that style for dark sword uh for like a lot of the stuff that i did and so i kind of wanted to bring that kind of style to it a little bit and and try to you know add some of those little um i guess uh, micro details that like Tom Meyer does and that kind of thing to, to sort of as sort of an homage to that. So it, it was fun. It was a fun piece to, to work on. So no, she's, she's great. I, we Thanks. were talking, we were talking a couple weeks ago about all the old world stuff coming back and how we all have kind of a soft spot for Bretonians. And mm -hmm. we were talking about like, you know, Oh man, I'm so mad. I don't have the green Knight. And then last week they announced they're going to do, print on demand and they're going to bring back all the medals. And I was like, ah, oh, son of a, I have to get a green knight now. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, that's funny that you should mention that. Let's see. Can I get in this box? Oh yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Cause I think I had posted that cause it's, it's yeah. 
There's, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's, uh, there's all my here. Here he is. Yeah. There's the top that, part of my green knight. Such yeah. such an awesome model. He's yeah. so great. It's great. Uh, yeah, I've, I've kind of set this aside because I'd kind of like to shoot a little bit of video and, and put it together and paint it since I've got a little bit more. I've got some more chops now than I did back when this came out. So right. I thought, you know, and I've been saving it to where it's like, I don't know if I can paint that up like the like the studio model. But now I, I'm feeling pretty confident. Like, I think I can screw that up just right. You know, <laughs> he's, he's, he's really good. He's he's a little tiny by today's standards. Yeah. Like, yeah. you look at a lot of the new cavalry and you're like man he's gonna be small because mm -hmm. he was already i remember when they when they when they did the the plastic knight of the realm box mm -hmm. i remember being like he was for the longest time he was like the biggest horseman and then you're like the knights of the realm came out and you're like they're basically the same size as him and now all the hero models are bigger than that i'm like oh man yeah. he looks like a kid riding a pony <laughs> <That's laughs> hey, yeah model. yeah that's so he's gonna build up that base build up right, that base. right. yeah give yeah. him the yeah. rock yeah <laughs> I uh, I watch um, e uh, eBay miniature rescues or something with Casey, <laughs> and he's got a yep. Green Knight video on there where he did that and built like this cork. It's it's like a big, like a rocky outcropping or whatever that it's on top of, and it's like yeah, that's a clever idea. And then you put it up next to the other one. It's like yeah, it doesn't look doesn't look too off, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> you just gotta make sure the focus is on the, on the top half of the model. Right. Know, right. And uh, drop away. Mm -hmm. But yeah. That was cool. And in the other scenes, it's great. Uh, scale creep is real. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Josh says the Fleur de Lee is the official sigil for Louisville. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, and Scott says the Fleur de Lee is the symbol for the absolute worst province in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not wrong. <laughs> I was going to say, I've, I've not been to Quebec, but <laughs> excellent. Um, and yeah, Mike Becker says the fact that the Green Knight was one of Michael Perry's first two sculpts after losing his hand, sculpting hand is amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. It's the it's the it's the the best part of that model for my money is the the barding on the horse is awesome, but mm -hmm. it's it's the horse's head and the way that it's curled and the chamfron yeah. with mm -hmm. like the the yeah. the the, 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 yeah. the sort of crest yeah. is uh -huh. incredible. Yeah, that that really sets the model apart. Yeah, definitely. Like the the rider himself is he's fine. Like he's fine. Like he's <laughs> he's not he's not phenomenal. He's not terrible. He's he's just a knight. But that horse, it's the horse that does it. The horse is incredible. <laughs> um, cool. Well, the next thing uh, we're going to take a look at is uh, something you've got coming up soon. Not soon. Oh yeah. Uh, well, uh, if you're if you're talking about the Kickstarter project, then uh, yeah. It, it's uh, it's 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 going to be. It was going to be in the first quarter, but if I was going to get into Adepticon or not, and so we're, I, it was like, okay, well, if I can't go to Adepticon, then I'm going to launch a Kickstarter project because um, I've been wanting to do this for a while. Uh, but then w once I was able to go to the show, I was like, okay, well, then I'm just gonna I'm gonna bump it, you know, and finish the sculpts and so forth when I get back, and then we'll launch it then. Um, because I, I kind of want to do um, these sisters models. And then I've got some, some rat designs that I'm working on that are kind of these Victorian rat characters. And like, there's a, like a big rat ogre guy and, you know, just some other things uh, because, you know, as much of a fan of the Skaven that, that Vicky is, I was like, okay, well I can do some stuff and do it a little bit, a little bit different, you know, and uh, but I, I wanted to kind of structure it very similar to the way that you would put warbands together for Mordheim so that the 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 model types were represented. Yep. Um, and then I need to go back and I'm going to make uh, a whole set of, you know, modular hands and weapons and things so that you can swap out or kit out, you know, how you want the different sisters models to go. It's like, well, I want these kind of hammers or I want you know, two-handed hammer or axe or what, you know, just whatever. So there will just be a, a whole bunch of stuff in there. Plus there's going to be some terrain too. So I've got lamp posts and um, I, I, I posted a picture of that somewhere, I think on Facebook. That's uh, like, there's a little, there'll be a little terrain kit uh, with like windows and some other things that you can use for, uh, you know, setting up, you know, terrain things. So. Right. Uh, 
cool thing. You've, you've just inspired a whole uh, flurry of uh, suggested names for. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that's that's great. Yeah. Uh, and I may swipe some of those. So uh, <laughs> it was funny because I had gone out. No. It was funny. Anyway, I'm going to stop in a quick story. Um, <laughs> so when More Time was originally released, uh, we had uh, Games Workshop made T-shirts with the More Time logo across it. But in Germany... It was called Mo it was Mortheim, because like home of death or city of death kind of thing. Um, needed a T, so their T-shirts, the German T-shirts, had Mortheim on them. So the the D was a T instead, but it was right there in the center, which is why I keep pointing to the here. But um, I was lucky enough to be able to trade a T-shirt with the German team. One point. Please tell me you still have that T-shirt. I believe it is in a crate just over there. If not the, over there, it's in a crate over there. Dude, that's rad. <laughs> <laughs> yep, definitely cool. So here we go. So I'm I'm clearly going to uh, bump up my internet uh, <laughs> uh, bandwidth to the next tier um, after this. Sure. Because so, that's probably, feel, probably good good off, so. <laughs> Yeah, well, you, you've got you still got the uh, the wood burning internet. Your your poor wife's just throwing logs on him. It's not it's not uploading any faster. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Actually, we, we've got a little wheel that the cats run on that spins. That nice. That's what generates the, the internet. Yeah. So the cats cool. are notoriously untrustworthy, though. So I mm -hmm. guess that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to try to print out some of the some of the models, uh, just a little sample of uh, some of the sculpts that I'm working on in order to take Depticon. And then I should have a little QR code where um, you can click on that and I'll post the link um, because you can sign up to be notified when the Kickstarter launches. It's the little page is already set up. Yeah. So that way, um, whenever we do launch it, it'll notify you, hey, it's running now and all that. So for, for stretch goals, for stretch goals, obviously we need the uh, the Carnival of Chaos. <laughs> and uh, we need right. a bunch of like- And the Witch Hunters. With, we need a uh -huh. bunch of Ratmen with slings, uh -huh. like 30 of them. And then, right. um, what else yep. could we have? You, you need, uh, yeah, pilgrims with buckle hats. Pilgrims yeah. with buckle hats, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, th I think in this one we're gonna do we're gonna do the sisters and we're gonna do the rats, <coughs> and then I'll do another project for the for the other two stock. All right, yep. Type things because I've, I've uh, Vicky and I are working on uh, coming up with some some fairy fairly different designs for the um, the whatever the chaos thing equivalent would be. So cool. it'll be something different. Excellent. Matt just found his Carnival of Chaos minis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Mike has asked a good question. Uh, STLs? Yeah, actually the, the Kickstarter project is going to be STLs only. And so once that runs and it gets fulfilled, then we'll start printing them and then you can order uh, the prints and stuff physically through the web store right. um, after that. So that way we don't have to out of you know fulfillment shipping, you know you can just order them directly from us. Right. Oh, fantastic. So kind of streamline some things. Yeah, definitely uh, looking forward to that. And I know there'll be a, a whole bunch of folks uh, looking forward to that as well. Yeah, I'm going to try to start hitting that more time group with some more of the sculpts and stuff as I'm working on. There's some really amazing stuff over in the Mordheim Facebook group. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, yeah, I, I'm. I'm very impressed with a lot of the work over there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. <coughs> but uh, no, they're definitely, uh, definitely cool. And Matt, yeah, physical models uh, a little bit later. It probably doesn't need to be too much later at all. Right? No, no. It's it, it, We'll put them in the web store right after we uh, fulfill uh, all of the, the digital <laughs> stuff. And that'll be over on my mini factory. So it's like, well, once you back the Kickstarter thing and it wraps up, we'll activate all of the STL files on my mini factory and then we'll start adding them, you know, to the web store and then you'll just buy the physical products from us pretty much right after that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Excellent. Uh, okay. So I think um, we are, we've hit that time when it's time to head into community miniatures. Cool. This is one of my favorite segments of the show. <laughs> Why is it that every guest we have on says my favorite segment of the show is where <laughs> <laughs> it, because it's 
you get to see all of the different work. It's just so great. It's it's community building. It's yeah, community building, yeah. I, I I really I know. And, like, and even if I'm hobbying, if I'm working on something, I'll stop and it's like, okay, now I've got to watch what's going on. You know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think that's uh, that's good. That's cool. I'm good with that. Uh, first up, we have um, we've got a couple models from Adam Weller. Uh, Adam uh, is a spectacular painter from. Uh, Australia, I think Adam is in South Australia, uh, but uh, he's just recently joined our Facebook group. And... Isn't isn't all of Australia South Australia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all of Australia is south of us right now, but not all of it all is of Australia south. is south. Got it? Okay. The the north of Australia is North Australia. Yeah, it's just less south. The west is west Western Australia. <laughs> sure, we have incredibly. Uh, convincing uh, naming protocols but anyway uh so <laughs> uh this first incredible uh kind of crazy beast um i'm not yeah, sure i think he said it's his name it's called sweet tooth sweet tooth i think that's what he said it, it's called the model's <laughs> called uh it it reminds me of the model from um uh it was from one of the kill team boxes the weird the nurgled monsters that live in like the engine room right that's what it, it reminds me of one oh, of those because you know yeah. what I mean, like the the chaos <laughs> the Geller Fox. Dudes. Yeah, 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 the Geller Fox. It, it reminds me of one of the Geller Fox models. Yeah. <clears throat> what? Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, Dan says there's South Australia and then there's South Australia. Yeah, absolutely true. But uh, Adam also graced us with this uh, awesome rendition of uh, of Dread. Yeah, dude, he's he's rad. Like I love Judge Dread, and this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Josh is right. That thing probably does live in Australia, without a doubt. Uh, it's but, not yeah. poisonous, though. It, it's not poisonous. It's just big and scary. Yeah. No, it's it's poisonous. Um, but <laughs> no, this dread is uh, dread is awesome. I think um, Adam's done a fantastic job. Get, just punching in that that subtle green in there, as well as the uh, the less subtle blue. But uh, no, I yeah. Think he did and such a good there's so many there's so many cool tones in there like there's so many tones in like the yellow and the green yeah yeah beautiful work adam thank you very much <laughs> yes <laughs> he is he is the law for sure awesome uh next up we have uh some stuff from chris so first up is this What's this one called, Jake? This thing has the dumbest name in all of the nomenclature for Star Wars, in my opinion. It's like the L L. It's the L A A T slash I E, or like L A A T dash T E, depending on like what its role is. It's okay. It's it's, it's basically a tie Blackhawk, is what it is. It's okay. It like flies in and the doors open and like it unloads troops and then it flies away. It's it's a it's a it's an Imperial Blackhawk, is what it is. Okay. Radio, <laughs> but uh, regardless of the, the, the silly name, uh, Chris has done an awesome job painting it. Um, looks great. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, Chris usually does like crazy vibrant colors, and like for him, this is this is about as like sedate a model I've seen Chris do. Yeah. Um, which makes sense because again, it is like a imperial, you know, separatist kind of or imperial uh, vehicle. So it makes sense that it's it's nice and crisp like that. Um, he did an awesome job with it, and as uh, as John says, uh, beautifully painted, no matter what it's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, excellent work, Chris. As well. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, I'm on the wrong. There we go. Uh, Chris, also speaking of colorful, there, uh, there we go. That's <laughs> that's the Chris Gorka that I know. Yep. So a couple of uh, heralds of Zinch. Yeah, his his color blending is so good. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's beautiful. Like that pink hurts my eyes. It's so vibrant. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. I love the uh that fade through the blue, like the purple to the blue on the uh the moon face. Yeah. I like it. I think it's uh yeah, it just works beautifully. Excellent work there, Chris. Yeah, those are awesome. That looks great. Uh, next up, uh, Chris Kemig has been preparing more vehicles for his uh, Legion's Imperialis gaming at Adepticon. Gross, 
four, <laughs> four, four main blades. Four main blades, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I think um, I saw a, a post. I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't remember who posted it. I think it was, um, might have been Arbiter, Arbiter Ian, Arbiter Ian, uh, about he built two main blades. And I was like, yeah, there was a lot of work in that. So I'm just going to put these aside and I'm going to paint a whole bunch of tiny men's before I come back and do any more bang blades. <laughs> so Chris uh, always uh, has a bit more discipline and has just gone straight in for the massive tanks. They're so good. That looks great. They, mm -hmm. Yeah, they look, look beautiful. Excellent. Um, I think great amount of uh, shading in there on that, that pale gray. Um, I, I still want to see somebody do a perspective shot where they take a tiny one and put it real close and then right. take a full size one and put it like two feet back and take a photo. So they look like they're the same size. Right. Yep. <laughs> or you can do like forced what? perspective, you know, like, uh, like Roman Lapot does in like his little frames or whatever you could do like yeah. a big bane blade in the front and then have like a bunch of them on a hill or something behind them. So. I, I more just want to see them roughly the same size on the screen because I don't think you'll lose any definition. Like I, they did such a good job with the epic ones. I right. don't think that you'd really, I, I don't think you'd be able to tell. I really don't. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, so just quickly, uh, oh, Carl Tuttle says, um, gray to, to me is such a tricky color to paint and not have it look like sprue. Yeah, <laughs> I think you've got to go. You gotta go a yeah. bit lighter and you're gonna throw some uh some blues in there for sure. Yeah, one of the two. You either gotta go lighter or you gotta go darker. Right. Yeah. Or, or you or you have to like add some tone. Like you've gotta add a little bit of you know German field gray, so it's a little green, or you gotta go Thunderhawk blue, so it's a little blue. Um yeah. And we're gonna say hi to uh GM Cody saying first time here, highly enjoying the show. Came here through Crown of Command. Fantastic. Welcome, Cody. Oh, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, uh, you enjoy the rest of the show, and uh, you can check out some of our previous episodes and <coughs> into the future ones. Become part of the uh, the community. Love to have you here. So, uh, Chris Cummings painted those. They look awesome, Chris. Uh, Dave Hummel uh, has been working on his uh, Masters of the Chapter. So, yes, twelve uh, Masters that he's working on. These are uh, the first ten of them. So uh, Dave Hummel has one of the largest space ring collections ever. Yep, absolutely. Uh, funny that we've got Carl in. Uh, I just watched episode 233 of the independent characters. Uh, and they were talking about the psychology of collecting 40K. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. And I think um, it would have been great. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to. I don't. I don't need to know. I don't need to look behind the curtain. <laughs> but uh, I think it would have been great to uh, to have Dave on to uh, to chat about his collection. Mm -hmm. Would it? Would it, would it have been a good idea? It would have been a fantastic idea. I think it would have been awesome. Definitely. Uh, he's got some great models there too. He's got. Um, uh, so he's got the old. He's got the old. Uh, heroes of the chapter. Master, Masters of the chapter. Yeah. yeah, Master of the chapter, and then he's got like I think that's Artemis. The yep. second guy on the left, right? I think he, I think he swapped out his chainsaw, but I think that's Artemis. Uh, watch Captain Artemis. Yeah, and then he's got uh, the the Master of Execution, the the space room with the two with the double hand axe in the middle. Yep, and then that's the that's uh, Astarath's backpack that's floating. Yep, um, that's a Gravis conversion captain on the front right. Oh no, that's Marnius Calgar. Right, that's Marnius yep. Calgar's body, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. But, really close. but yeah, yeah they're, they're so great, good. Great stuff, Dave. I know you're having fun with these. Definitely cool. Uh, and Dave also posted uh, a photo that I had to show because I'm super proud of this. Huh. Wow. We know we know that guy. That's I mean, a nice collection. Yeah. So uh, a whole bunch of people have been receiving uh, volumes seven, eight, and nine. For the art of series, uh, which is really cool. I'm very excited about that. Hooray! Dave, I'm so proud of you. Like with, with Dave's with Dave's with Dave's new set, he's now over a dozen books that he's published on his own. That's that's amazing. That's that's so great. Yeah. It's definitely uh no cool. Thanks, thanks very much, guys. Um I, I'm super excited because it looks like we've had like minimal damage at the moment. We're we're tracking below below one percent. 
in damages, which is always nice. Wow, that's, that's great. Yeah, for, for books, it's really tough to. That uh, means your that means your shipping partners are doing their job. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I just I need to remember to take volume one to Adepticon with me this year, so I can get it autographed by a bunch of the folks that are going to be there. Uh, volume one, because... volume four, and volume seven. Oh yeah. Okay. So the, all, the miniature monthly team. Uh, so Aaron, Elizabeth, and mm -hmm. uh, Matt, uh, Chris Surrey, who did uh, Volume 4, and Eric Swinson, Volume 7, are all going to be doing signings at the Game Envy booth. Oh, okay. The weekend. That's cool. Are Are you going to have any copies of that to sell at the show? Or are they, uh, they going to be on sale? They'll be on sale at Game Envy. Um, the Game, Game Envy? Envy? Okay. Yep. I just uh, cool. actually, last week I bought a, I went onto Amazon, I bought a, a spinner rack. Uh-huh. For them so a 36 pocket spinner rack so they're going to have great. that on their uh their booth awesome okay cool i'll i'll be sure to try to get by and, and snag a few copies of and stuff. if you if you bring them by dave will sign them too so yeah oh well that'd be great <laughs> yeah, absolutely i'll sign at the back where my final thoughts are okay uh it's it's kind of like a yearbook you know you take it around to get all the all of your yeah, yearbook yeah. friends you know yeah because yeah. i've i've got some stuff that people have painted that are in that first volume Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh look, uh, look uh, you know, I was just flipping through it. It's like, oh look, look, look at that. I didn't know they even painted one. <laughs> so yeah, it's cool. That's awesome. Um, fantastic. Uh, next up is uh, another new uh, poster. So this is Emil uh, posted up this uh, fantastic model. Uh, this is a conversion of the. Um, oh, I can't remember his name, but I have the box down here. Let me see if I can reach it. Here we go. Uh, the Iron Father Ferios, yeah. Ferios model, which is uh, spectacular, but it's his. Um, a part of it is a bunch of it's a bunch of it's Gilliman. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, I saw this and I I tagged this kid and I was like, "You need to post this on Build Pay Play so we can talk about it." Yeah. <clears throat> but it's his it's his Legion of the Damned conversion of uh, Ferris Manus, and I was like, "That's rad." Yeah, it is awesome. Absolutely yeah, spectacular. Really cool. Um, and what has he got like wire or something around on the weapon that's like the electrical glowing and yep yeah that's I think, I think it is, yeah yeah that's really cool really yeah cool. it's his thunder hammer and then behind him there's like a like an iron beam uh -huh. and then he has like arcs of electricity coming off the hammer yeah. onto it yeah, that's he, great. I mean, yeah he did an awesome job painting that it looks incredible yeah I mean, that, that's one of the, the classic things that I would have um, failed to do with my OSL. I have a tendency to put the OSL at the edge of the model. But by putting that beam behind it, that dark beam behind it, and giving that point to arc to also mm -hmm. gives a point for it to sort of reflect, reflect off and really en enhance that OSL look. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, fantastic work. <laughs> outstanding yeah and uh, just says this makes my eyes happy and confused absolutely he also, he also did his he also did his plasma the way that i like it which is it's hotter inside than it is outside yeah yeah <laughs> the, the, like the most difficult way to do it yeah it absolutely is but it, it always it's whenever you see it on a model you're always like why does that look different oh right because it's the right way it's like mechanically it's the right way it just it looks super cool absolutely and uh, Carl says, uh, I mean, it's okay if you're into extremely well-painted miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm into any sort of painted miniatures, Carl. So <laughs> absolutely. Uh, it's super cool. Looks awesome. Thanks very much for posting an ML. We look forward to seeing some more of your, uh, your posts. Uh, Fabrice. Uh, Fabrice, had, we saw a conversion of this last week. Uh, we converted the uh, Archeon. This is, uh, Archeon. This is Archeon in disguise. Yep. The Archeon on foot model, uh, and he's converted him up for a Bretonian lord, and uh, he's done a fantastic job here as well. Uh, <laughs> he's like he's like the mountain on foot. Oh, he's yeah. a massive, massive <laughs> guy. <laughs> exactly. He's yeah, just... is, that, is that a twenty-five millimeter base? Is that? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, <laughs> uh, Archeon, Archeon, I don't think is on a twenty-five. I think he is on a thirty. Okay. Oh no, he should be on a thirty, but I mean that that particular base I think is a okay. Is a yeah, the size of it makes it look like a twenty millimeter base, but that's uh, he he is huge. Like yeah. that model is gigantic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, Fabrice did a, a fantastic job there. And one of the things that uh, on his shield, he used uh, thin strips of plasticard. So there's the sort of the gold strips down the 
to make one that cross. Oh wow! To separate the uh, the different fields. But yeah. yeah. Very Reese, nice. Reese did a great job on this. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Uh, next up, Jeff Smith posted uh, AMR and Mary. That's uh, Awin and Mary. That's what I meant. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she, uh, as, as she'll remind you, she is no man. This is true, but she's trying to look like one here. That's true. Why, why I said Emma, but uh, yeah, beautiful, uh, excellent. I'm um, sorry, Scott. Scott just said. Side note about the art of Volume Eight. I read the intro and immediately fell down an internet hole reading about the Faroe Islands. I didn't know they existed until today. Not only Classy, learning about Classy, Classy, Scott. Scott, we're also teaching you about geography. Fantastic. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, no, Matt, they're not taking this Hobbit to Isengard. But looking, uh, looking awesome there, Jeff. Um, love that horse. Love the, yeah, uh, the, the blends on the horse are, are magnificent. Yeah. Beautiful. And I uh, also posted these two pics of, uh, for when that horse a beautifully blended horse gets shot out from underneath them. Uh, and again, like a Eowyn, they're raising a shield to not reveal. She hasn't taken her helmet off to reveal mm -hmm. that she is no man. But uh, looking great. Fantastic work, Jeff. Yeah, they're awesome. I, I The Rohirrim are my favorite. Yeah. Really good. But yeah, beautiful work. Uh, next up, I had a couple of uh, regiments painted by John this week. Uh, wow. With his uh, speed painting. So, uh, uh, folks at home, I, I apologize for the nudity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there is some. I didn't notice. Uh, these, are, these are obviously some of my ancestors. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, excellent, uh, excellent goals here. Uh, the transfers on the uh, shields are the dry rub transfers from uh, Little Big Men Studios. Uh, and I think, as John said at the time, the, the uh, first naked dudes on the show. Well, we, we can't see Jake from the waist down, so just saying. Um, That's also behind a paywall. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, John's saying they, they do a lot of the heavy, heavy lifting, but uh, I think his, his work on the, on the Warriors is great. Well, that's um, the stiffened hair, the uh, the highlighting there. Everything looks awesome. I do, I do yeah. love the mentality that anybody who is from of of like sort of northeastern, uh, or, or yes, I guess technically northwestern European descent from the British Isles or somewhere adjacent or Celtic uh, Celtic background or Germanic background. Mm -hmm. At some point, our ancestors were like, "Here come the Romans." What do they do? Uh, they're really good at math and building stuff, and they're wearing like some of the finest armor around. We should go fight them. What should we do? Let's just take our shields and our spears and go get them. You don't want to wear clothes? No, that's ridiculous. Like, let's it'll really weird them out if we show up with no pants. If we show up with no pants, but belts, let's put yeah, belts. yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, where am I supposed to hang my sword? Right? That's, <laughs> yeah, let's not be ridiculous. And there's a couple guys wearing helmets because you got to be safe. Like, that's yeah, yeah. Well, the great thing is those, uh, like the, the tall helmets with the three. Feathers at the top are Roman helmets or uh, Republican Roman helmets. Yeah. So they definitely killed a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. But yeah, they, they look awesome. <laughs> As John says, armor slows you down. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but John also painted up some. Uh, he went not quite the other way, but it, actually, yeah. It's like these are definitely fully closed. Well, these are uh, 15th century Lanschnecks. Um, yeah. So this is 700 years later where the British have gone totally the other way. And now they wear just layers upon layers of clothes. <laughs> yeah. I think these are uh, probably German. It's still like Germanic there, but uh, I can't tell there's that, um, that eagle on the, on one of the uh, banners there. But uh, no, they look fantastic, John. And as you said in the post, uh, having those huge banners is uh, fantastic and they look awesome on the, on the tabletop. They're super cool. Yep. Uh, excellent. As we get, um, yes, you know how when you post, post uh, 
when somebody posts a naked fighter lady on the internet, you get a lot of virtue signaling that way how we're sexualizing women. I doubt the reaction would be as extreme with these. Yes. Well, you saw you saw the you saw the, the naked men. It's fine. I've seen them now. Um, yeah, these are great. I love yeah. these guys. Awesome work, John. We look forward to seeing more. <coughs> uh, next up, Josh. Josh posted uh, his um, a photo of his owl bear. And amusingly enough, at the you like, I, I time I saw well. that, it was like, nice. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize Dave, that we had, uh, the Patrick had dropped out, and we now... Dave also Dave also has an owlbear. Yep. <clears throat> there we go. Patrick's back in. So we're Josh's owlbear, but it's the same owlbear, and it's purple, <laughs> just like Josh's. <laughs> very, very awesome. purple. Very purple. Awesome. Great work there, Josh. Thanks. Thanks, Carl. I appreciate it. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. Uh next up we have uh Ken Hutzel has been painting some more I minis, mean, got a blood angel, and uh this is one of his own uh creations, chapter of his own creation on the right hand side. I can't remember the name of it. I feel terrible. Uh, weren't they shadow Shadow uh, Knights? Shadow Knights, I think. Could be. But uh yeah, looking good there. I love that um, you've got the great sort of smoothness going on with the uh, the red on, on the Blood Angel there. I always I always liked the uh, the black power fist on the Blood Angel Terminators on the on the floor just to like just to like break up the just to break up this because otherwise you're like it's just a giant red blob. So right. I think when they when they first did the Space Hulk expansion box on the back when they would show the Terminators, they either had chevron stripes or they had they always had the black like hand. Yeah, yeah, but uh, looking good, excellent. Looking forward to seeing some more. Uh, Christian Simonson posted a slightly different type of art. Cool, a nurgling. <laughs> yeah, the nurgling. Well, that, could, that could be that could be like a a great unclean one, like it, posing it, posing for his like uh, his school photo. I think yeah. I went to high school with that guy. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> But no, I mean, it was the 80s, you know. Yeah. Chosen as uh chosen as uh most likely to spread disease. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, looking fantastic there, Christian. Thanks for sharing that. Looks great. Yeah, this is he's not a great unclean one, he's just an unclean one. He's right. like he's newly out of high school. Right. Freshly unclean. He hasn't achieved greatness just yet. Yeah. <laughs> he has to go to Nurgle College. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Uh, and we've got an, another shot here of uh, some Christians. Um, excellent. His his conversions are so good. He has such a Blanchetu vibe. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm digging the grim <coughs> dark on that. And that's nice. Yeah. Yep. looking really good. Awesome. Excellent. Thank that's you, Christian. Uh, next up. So this is uh, continues to be a, a work in progress, I think, for um, Luis. Uh, and not only did he paint the uh, all the, the glowing bits and pieces there, but also had a little uh, or used some of the the plastic rod, yeah, green plastic rod, sort of uh, firing out the end there. So L Luis was so funny. He came in a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he's a Gundam painter. Is how he got started, and he wanted to get into minis, so he started buying paints. And he's always airbrushed his Gundams, so he wanted to get into painting other minis and more traditional. So he came in and, and was like, I want to get some Space Marines. So I got him the start collecting with 40K, which comes with like a Necron and a Space Marine or whatever. And he like went home and he built them and he started painting these. And then he came in and was like, I need more greens. So he bought like nine greens or something. And then he came back <laughs> and bought like another five more. Um, so he, I mean, he obviously put them all to work here, like layering up and stuff. And like they, yeah. his green looks incredible. Yeah. <coughs> I think he said this was his... Uh... Kind of where he'd, he'd taken it to. So we see here the uh, there's a um, very sort of ruddy copper color, and I think yeah. he toned it down here with um, with some washes. Mm -hmm. Pull it back a bit. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That that skull looks like real shiny gold, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he uh, airbrushed that on with a like a Gundam gold paint, but it's uh, yeah, definitely super cool. Yeah, it, uh, John said, yeah, this is his first 40K mini. Yeah. Definitely cool. 
So fantastic work. Keep it up. I guess we get to see the space marine next. Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Excellent. So uh, next up, we've got Matt Bowles. And Matt's been uh, doing some more work on his uh, excellent squigs, including the flying squigs. So very cool to see these coming along. Uh, I love the variety of uh, skin tones there in the in the orcs. Um, it's not something that people usually do, so it's uh, it's fun to see that. It's it makes sense, right? I mean, oh yeah, for sure, definitely. I like it. I I love the flying ones. The flying ones are so rad. Yeah, awesome work there, Matt. Very cool. Great. Nice. It's like a, they're like it's like a fat hummingbird. <laughs> yeah, but it, they, they remind me that there's one of the the dragons in uh, How to Train Your Dragon. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, the really chunky one. Yeah, yeah, like the Gronkle or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It it can only fly because it thinks it can fly. Right. right exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It can only fly because the orcs think they can fly. Right. 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 <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, and Matt says, yeah, he's working with about three to four different skin tones. Nice. That's cool. Okay. Got to have diversity even among the orcs. That's know. right. Exactly. Oh, and there's a little uh, little note there in the background. I noticed is uh, Game Face Con. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he picked up the uh, Games and Stuff grand opening. So uh, this is going to be held at the uh, is it two weeks away at the um, uh, brewery, the microbrewery, like a block and a half from my house. So I'll be there checking that out. Definitely cool. Uh, awesome. Next up, Mike Hughes. Come on. <laughs> so Mike posted this uh, a couple of pictures of his uh, awesome avatar. The uh, war aspect of Kayla Mencha Kane. Like it, yeah. This model looks like it would burn you if you touched it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Like he did such a good job making this look like it is molten steel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, it's, it's, uh, it's genuinely hot looking. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, absolutely oh, beautiful. Awesome. It's lovely. Uh, we're a close up of it. That's just uh, awesome. Mike has a, a YouTube channel as well, um, which I forgot to link in the uh, show notes below. But um, I'll do that. We'll throw it in for the hot pit next week, I think. Uh, but definitely, if you head to the Build Paint Play community Facebook page, um, Mike's posted a couple of links to um, tutorials that he's done on his uh, YouTube channel. <coughs> check those out but yeah he's done he's done so much incredible work on this model like the like even the blacks like the blacks on like the runes that are hanging off of them like there's so much tonality in there because yep. they're not just flat black like he he's got four or five different grays on every one of them and then as you get into the armor mm -hmm. i like that as the armor gets further away from it it cools so like yep. the mm -hmm. collar of his armor is almost steel mm -hmm. yeah Yep. It's like this model is just it's in, it is incredible, yep. absolutely beautiful, Mike. That's so cool. after this, I'll give you my my address and you can just mail this guy to me and I'll just put it in my case. That'd be that'd be great. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and John, yeah, John says this looks like cover art for the Codex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a hundred percent. Oh, oh, look at that, <laughs> Heath. Uh, those, are cool. those are are those uh, Arco flagellants. Yeah, Arco, okay, flagellants. Yeah, yeah. Talking to Fledgelands for uh, for your sisters a battle. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, yeah, looking uh, looking super cool there. Thanks, thanks. I, I, I love, each one I of those is painted wild. with a different. It's a different technique on each one of them. Uh, I shot some video of that and posted uh, last week or whenever it was. So uh, that I go over the process on that. I love how wildly impractical they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like just <laughs> from a design crazy. standpoint, like right. some some guys like. Well, we have a bunch of criminals that we want to fight for us. You're like, okay, what are we going to do? We're, we're going to load them up with stims. Mm -hmm. That sounds awesome. Are we going to put them in like armor? No, no, no. We're going to give them like jumpsuits and then we're going to replace their arms with like metal whips. And you're like, yeah, wait, don't, don't we want them to not die? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're on combat drugs. Right. But like you could just shoot them in the head or the chest and it's like, no, 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 don't, don't worry. We have hundreds of them. So we don't care. Right. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> just wave after wave. Right. Yep. Absolutely. <coughs> I know they look great, Patrick. Thanks. Thanks. It, it was a lot of, a lot of fun to try something different. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, uh, yeah, go and check that out. Uh, so the bombshell miniatures, uh, YouTube channel, mm -hmm. I think, uh, 
in the notes below. What did I link? Patrick, I, if I, you, Patrick, Patrick you, sh- you should have just made them naked. Just paint them naked? Yeah. Yeah, why not yeah. just paint them naked? They're just like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. Thanks very much for that, Patrick. Uh, Thanks. Also, uh, Ross Benilla, Benilla, uh posted <laughs> these fantastic uh, Old World Goblins. So these is, are from is that the old is that the old like third or fourth edition box? Fourth edition, yeah. <laughs> fourth edition box, the uh fantastic Orcs and, uh, Orcs and Goblins. These are the ones that are super pointy. So if you were to oh god, yeah, yeah, I remember really slap your hand down on them, you could like come away with them. It's, it's something that we we did a, a game we would play occasionally in the in the store when there were no customers around. So you'd have a block of 20 of them and you'd slap your hand on them and see how many you could come away with. The winner, of course, being the one who came away with most. But uh, Ross is doing an excellent job on these, uh, and he's doing uh, painting them with a, like a white face paint on half of the the faces. Oh, nice. So they're looking uh, looking very cool. You know, awesome work. Great to see those being dug out. So we're having fun with them. Uh, okay, Stephen uh, posted up this crazy beast. That's a that's a that's a roper. A roper, nice. But uh, I know this is this is one. I think we showed the. Um, I don't know if it, did I show the. Did we show the work in progress of the, it disassembled? But uh, with this being such an old model, this is like in 1980, I think 80, 82, maybe. Um, while he was cleaning up one of the uh, tentacles, the end of the tentacle broke off, so we had to pin, put a pin in, and re-sculpt it with some uh, epoxy sculpts. But, uh, oh, we lost Patrick again. No, <laughs> that's right. We're we're almost at the finish line, so he's back. Yeah, hey. yeah. <laughs> back. I, was back, I was backstage. Yeah, that's, that's nice work on fixing that tentacle. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, folks. We'd like to welcome our new guest, uh, Patrick, back to the show. <laughs> it's good to be here. Thank you very much. Awesome. I, I think technically, Dave, I think we've had Patrick on more than anyone else. <laughs> right, just in and out. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to drop by every once in a while. Yeah. Oh, oh no, my mistake. Uh, so Stephen's saying it's a newer model um, that he's severely converted and pinned. Uh, it's the other world. Finishes. But yeah, looks fantastic. Excellent stuff. Oh, sorry. And then uh, next, Stephen. Uh, also, that's a bullet. Yep. So this or- model originally is uh, coming up out of water. So it's not coming up out of water, but uh, Stephen has adapted it. Um, talk, that. talk, talk. Candy Graham. Land shark. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. There we go. Oh, <laughs> Jess says Patrick is actually a cat. <laughs> not quite. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, fantastic work there, Stephen. Thank you very much for sharing. And that brings us to the end of the community minis. Well, that was a very nice sampling. Yep. Fantastic. Dude, my, my voice, my voice is toast. <coughs> it is. But yes. Uh, yes. Patrick has been the most returned guest. <laughs> in, in just one show. Yeah. He's been on, Patrick's been on at least seven or eight times. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it was uh, fantastic to have you on this many times, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was super great to be here. I, I appreciate the invite. Uh, thanks for letting me come on and, and talk about stuff I like to talk about and, uh, you know, pitch our stuff that we sell. Uh, that's yeah. super great. I, I appreciate that. No, we, we love um, love hearing you talk about working with uh, putties and then moving to digital, um, wrapping your head around the process for doing that. So if anybody mm-hmm. is uh, interested in sort of giving it a go themselves, the uh, the important thing really is that you've got to, you've got to focus on it, right? You've got to be mindful of everything that you're working on. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, the main takeaway is that it's, it's the same stuff. It's like all of the, the core knowledge that you have to have about uh, anatomy and uh, composition and just all of those, you know, foundational art things it doesn't really matter, you know, what medium you're using or what tool you're using to do that. You still have to have the foundational knowledge and you can, you can do that in any medium, whether it's putty or digital or whatever it, and um, that you're going to get the best results from that. The, the more information that you have um, about those foundational skills. Yeah. I guess um, things like uh, starting with converting 
starting mm-hmm. with uh, adapting uh, and also starting with copying, finding out yeah. copying your, um, yeah. your favorite, right. or your favorite mm-hmm. sort of minis and working with that to get that understand uh, to make sure that you've got that understanding of anatomy, which is sort of very, very key. There's a right. um, guy called uh, who posts on Instagram as Pax Acrylica. Mm-hmm. Yep. Who uh, I'd love to have on the show at some stage. That's some really awesome stuff over there. I, I follow him on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. And he's, he's definitely got, uh, you can tell he has an understanding of anatomy because of the way that he breaks anatomy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very deliberate changes to anatomy. But we'll, we'll talk about that again uh, at another stage because right. we're already running quite late. But no. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah uh, Vicky's waiting on me for some World of Warcraft stuff we're going to do here in just a little bit. <laughs> but does he, is she texting you saying, Are you done yet? Are you done yeah, yet? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, you know, we're going to go check on this plant quest thing that we're doing. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be there in a little bit. So awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick, Patrick, listen, it was, uh, it was awesome having you on and getting to talk to you. And I'm sure that we'll get a chance to catch up with you in person in a couple of weeks at Adepticon. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It, that that'll be, it was, it was, it was yeah. great having you on like seven or eight times tonight. And I'm really glad that we were able <laughs> to do it. So yeah, thanks. And no! Oh, no. <laughs> so if we do this again, hopefully. It'll, it'll oh, no, we can still hear you. So, there yeah, go. there we yeah. go. That's great. All right, so Dave, get ready before we lose the signal again. So, yeah, I got um, it. all right, everybody, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, if you watch the show tonight, and you and you enjoyed it, please um, like the video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're also now on. Um, we're also now streaming, so if you want to listen to us cool. on uh, iHeartRadio or on Spotify, you can uh, find our first episode on there. We'll be we'll be putting one up um we're putting a couple up every other week dave dave can dave dave can explain that better than i but we'll be we'll be yep. slowly posting episodes as we go uh and we'll get caught up over the next uh the next bit of this season next few um, weeks. and then who knows maybe we'll go back and add old ones but for now it'll probably just be this season that's on yep. there we'll see how it goes um but thank everybody thank you so much for being here patrick uh thank you everybody for tuning in thanks for having and me. we will see you guys next week uh i will probably not be here next week i'll be at uh at a at a gamma show um, but we're going to see if we can get uh, somebody to, to uh, guest host with Dave for the week. So, yeah, everybody have fun. Uh, and as always, do not forget to build, build paint, build play. paint, play. <laughs> cool. Bye. Shut up and sit down.